Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Channel The Dilty New. I'm Jeanette from Body Class Playing Crafts. This is Mello. Oh, now he's leaving. Ain't that something? Hey, guys. Hope everything is going well. I see Miriam is on the line and Sassy and Robin's in the chat room. And I see people are starting to come in. So I got my drink on because this is going to be a very depressing video, mostly for me. But it's important. I have to share it with you guys because you guys know I like to share everything. And this Friday, I'm going to be talking about my embroidery regrets. I'm talking about stuff that I have gotten that now that I look back, okay, and I've gotten more experience and all that kind of stuff, and I've done more stuff in my embroidery sh shop, these are things that I'm going to be talking to you guys about that. I kind of regret. I, I regret that I took that route and that I bought what I bought. And it kind of hurts when you think about the money that I spent and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like, I was like, all right, so I'm going to have to grab me a nice strong drink. So I made me a strawberry daiquiri, okay? And in case it ain't that strong, I got my back up, okay? So, you know, and if I have to pour it in, I'm going to pour it in and stuff because this is really going to be depressing because as I started to go down this list of the stuff that I've done with embroidery or purchased with regarding embroidery and sewing and all that kind of stuff, and I regret it, as you guys know, the ones that follow me for quite some time know that I like to really be frugal with my money. So unfortunately, and look, Mel showed up with his big bone. So unfortunately, you know, whenever I look at these regrets, the thing that pops in my head is I could have saved some money. I could, I, if I didn't do that, I would have saved some money. I wouldn't have spent it and stuff like that. But I'm going to try to look at it as a positive thing, okay, because it's a lesson learned. And, you know, hopefully I can, you know, this will help somebody out there to like, um, you know, I'm not, it's not for me to tell you not to do this. But it's just something for you to think about, okay? Because, you know, sometimes when you're new at things like I was, you think that something is really great and then you try it out or you get it and then, you know, or you you buy it, but you kind of bought it wrong or something like that. And then you're like, what the heck? What did I do? Okay? So I got 10 stuff to talk to you guys about, all right? So I'm going to start because I see that we already got a lot of people in the chat. And I see people already on there, so grab your drinks because if you accidentally got one of these things that I got, you guys are probably going to be like, oh, yeah, you're right, you know? All right, let me tell you the first thing. First thing, when I looked around this room that really stared back at me, okay, and when it stared at me, if, I, if, if it had fingers, I bet you it was giving me the middle one, okay? Because I had no business buying this. I bought it because I thought that this was going to save me money in the long run. It may if I figured out how to work it, okay, because I really couldn't figure out how to work it. When I tried to work it, I was, in my opinion, um, you know, wasting thread. So I just said, screw it. I'm not even going to bother with it, okay? And the thing is, I always buy the pre one. So what did I get? All right, so I got this. Okay, this is supposed to be an automatic bobbin winder. Okay, now it had really good reviews. A lot of people do use them. I, me, Jeanette, has not been able to figure it out. It has not worked for me. It's still in the box. The thing is, I held on to this sucker so long, I could not return it. Okay, so I was just like, okay, fine. So then I said, all right, not a problem. Whenever I have time, I will learn how to use this and I'm going to wind my own bobbins, right? That was the thought, okay? However, let me tell you, first of all, it's there's a lot of videos out there on how to do it, okay? But for some reason, every time I follow those videos, it does not work. I don't know if I have a defective one or whatever. It's just not coming out for me, okay? And to be honest, okay, what I ended up doing is I always buy pre-wind. Okay, the pre pre wine. I think I'm saying it right, but the ones that are already done for you, that's what I mean. Those bobbins, you know, for the SC 1900, I buy the box 
they're pretty inexpensive okay it's like I'm, well, you know, prices have gone up on everything. But I know when I bought my box, it was like $19.99. It's probably maybe $24 bucks now or something like that. I'm not sure. But the thing is, you get like 144 of the bobbins for the SC1900 in a box, right? So that lasts you for a very long time, okay? And if you really think about it, if I was to actually sit down with this machine and I would take these clear bobbins and sit there and wind 144 bobbins that's a, that's a long time that's a long time so what the hell i was thinking when i bought this um i was me trying to be like super cheap frugal okay but it just it didn't work out that way okay it ended up where it actually you know i spent money and i think i spent i think i spent a pretty penny on this thing I, I could be wrong, but it's somewhere in a range of 80 to maybe $100, I think, that I spent on that. It might have been over $100. i am not sure. But even if it was, let's think about it, okay? Let's say it is $100, okay? I could have bought me five boxes of 144 bobbins, okay? And let's not even think about the thread that I wasted trying to create the bobbin trying to learn that 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 machine okay so big mistake huge huge mistake sometimes doing certain things on your own isn't really beneficial that's what i learned from this okay and let me tell you i got it i have this box out and i look at it all the time every time i come to the sewing room i really want to like throw it in the closet or something maybe i'll put it for sale maybe somebody else will understand it i don't know this isn't going to happen for me and this is the other thing too am i going to have time to really wind up a whole bunch of bobbins i mean the thing that also went through my mind was what if i wanted bobbins in different colors and stuff like that then i have the machine and i could do it right and it probably do it really quickly and so like nah Forget about it. It just ain't going to work. Okay. So I was just like that. That was a very, very, very bad buy. It really was. I should not have done it. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I must have, I don't know. I must have been on some kind of, my mind wasn't working. Okay. All right. The second thing that I am noticing that I've recently done that I saved, but then I didn't save. And I think it could be a big mistake for me, okay? As you guys know, I have my Etsy shop and I actually do a bunch of stuff that I sell on my Etsy shop, right? Stuff that I like doing, which is like the kitchen towels, the dinner napkins. I like doing the baby blankets. That's a real big thing for me. Um, I am starting to venture out on a couple of children's items, but I really don't want to go too much into that because I'm not big into the clothes, right? Um, I don't like, you know, dealing with different sizes, like small, medium, large, because I feel like when you deal with items that come in different sizes like that, what ends up happening is you could end up with a lot of inventory in your house. So I'm just not a fan of that, right? Because I like to have inventory in my house that when it comes in, it comes out. And I don't like stuff just sitting there, right? So um, what I started doing was, you know, I went to Florida and I was hanging out with my sister. And before you know, we're looking at sewing patterns, right? And we found a bunch of sewing patterns for different projects, right? And some of these sewing patterns are projects that sometimes you see people do YouTube videos on, right? So I thought, oh, wow. So instead of like drawing my own pattern, I could go and I can cut some of these things and I can make them, right? Now, I remember one day we went and before you know it, they had like a sale, like all, all $1.99, right? So instead of just buying one pattern and making sure that I do the pattern, okay? That I don't just like buy it and put it in the drawer, all right. I remember the first pattern I think that I got was the one for Mello's um, shirt, you know, little coat or something like that. Never sewed it. Still in the back, in the in the thing. Never took it out. Haven't you know done the pattern or anything like that. 
So it's kind of like two things happens in those situations, okay? Either, you know, when you're sewing, okay, or embroidering and stuff like that, um, you got to be in like, you got to forgive uh, Mellow. Mellow, he's very loud with his bone. He's He's got the big bone and he's like all on it. When you are, um, when you are sewing and you're embroidering, right? And you're like, you know, not like an automatic thing where, you know, you got a sale and you just got to feel the sale and that's it, right? When you want to get in that creative mode and stuff like that, to me, I don't know how you guys feel, but for me, I feel like I have to be like in a zone, right? Like I have to be focused, very relaxed, in the mood, right? In the mood to sit there and 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 do your thing right well it's kind of hard to be in the mood sometimes because sometimes we got a lot going on and so like that you know um you know i don't have the house to myself as often as i kind of like to have because i kind of like a nice quiet house okay so my husband likes noise right so when he sits in his office he's always playing the music he's always playing the the the, the movies and all that kind of stuff but the thing is, he has issues with his hearing, right? He has something called tentatitis or something like that. So I know the noise helps him, but the noise really doesn't help me because I'm like right across from him. And then when I want to like focus, I can't focus. Now, it does help though that, you know, after he finishes his work day and all that kind of stuff, he goes downstairs and he likes to sit in his deck area, right, and do his thing. At that moment, though, I don't know. It's like it's easier. I have to be in that zone to sew or I won't sew. So what ends up happening, okay, is that I went and I got all these patterns, okay, because they're $1.99. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make that. That looks cute. That looks cute. Now I have a draw full of these things, and I haven't done, like, one. And I was talking to Miss Banks one, um, you know, chit-chatting with her one day. And I told her I got all these sewing patterns and I wanted to sew like a shirt, you know. And the thing is, I didn't realize these patterns can get so big. And then you have to buy the the fabric, you know, that's, that's going to, you know, you, you, you don't have little pieces, you know, because they're big projects. And I'm going to tell you something. Um. You take out the pattern, and you. I always hear people tell say this, that you don't cut the original pattern, right? You should always go and trace the pattern because the pattern has the different sizes, right? So if you cut the pattern to that to one size, then that's it. You just have the pattern to that size. As if you trace it, you can trace the size that you need and then use that trace copy, and you always have the original pattern. So if you need the bigger size or whatever, you got the original one, right? Okay, well, I started doing that, right? Because I said, oh, that makes sense because why would I want to rebuy this pattern if I get bigger? Because let's get real, okay? I'm getting older and I'm not getting any skinnier. I'm getting a little bigger, okay? So, <laughs> so you know, I mean, you, I would go in, in my closet, you could see at one time I used to be a size two, then I went from four, six, seven, eight, and, and on, right? So what ends up happening is, you know, I was like, it makes sense because then I'll have to go buy it again, you know, and stuff. So, you know, if I get bigger or whatever, or if I want to make it for a friend that that is bigger or smaller. Right. So tracing it and then cutting it and then cutting the fabric by the time I was finished. OK, tracing that pattern, cutting the pattern from the trace. And then placing that pattern to the fabric that I wanted to use to sew, I was like done. I was done. I was tired. So one of the things that Ms. Banks said is she uses one day for her cutting day. And then the second day she uses for her sewing day. So I was thinking, okay, well, that kind of makes sense, you know, because I was already tired when I was doing that. Now, what I kind of regret, though, is that I went ahead and I bought all these patterns, okay? Thinking that I'm going to make this, I'm going to make that, and all that kind of stuff. I already told myself I am not buying anymore. I'm done, okay? I'm not buying anymore. I can't, okay? Because I have to use what I have, okay? 
So that kind of sucks. So be careful with that, okay? I mean, you can really go pattern happy because what goes to your mind is it's $1.99. It's $1.99. It's only two bucks. It's only two bucks. And then you see on these patterns, right? I look and I see these these uh, suggested manufacturer suggested retail price, 20 bucks. And they're thinking, oh, wow, this pattern normally costs $20 and I'm only getting it for two bucks. And then I would go to the other one and go, oh, this one's $20 too. Most of them are, oh, this was $22. You know, you start looking around and then what goes to your mind is you're thinking you're saving all this money, but in reality, are you really saving money if you're not even making this stuff? No, you're not, okay? So what you're doing is you're turning into a pattern collector. That's what happens. You become a pattern collector. So that's what I am right now, okay? So I have been collecting these patterns, and I totally regret it, okay? I mean, I thought $1.99 is a great price, and it is a great price. It is if you use what you bought. So that is a big regret that I have, thinking that, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to sew all this great stuff. And then next thing you know, all I do is I have a whole drawer full of patterns, right? So, yeah. So that's my number two of my biggest regrets, okay, and stuff. And if you really think about it, I would be crying harder if I did not spend $1.99 on each if I've actually spent what, you know, full price on these things, oh my God, I would have a gallon of this right next to me right now drinking that because think of all the money, okay? You know, I mean, that's like, ugh. So already, like you could see, I, to me, this is right now, okay? Right now, because I haven't like used them, okay? It, I consider it wasted money. This definitely, I consider this, wasted money as well okay so it's just like oh what am i doing right so it's it's just it sucks okay all right so the third okay the third thing that i regret doing this is probably not a bad idea if you are brand new and you are just starting an embroidery okay is going out and continuing, okay? And this is how I'm using the word continuing, all right? Because when you're first starting out, you don't have any of this, okay? You don't have nothing. And I'm talking about thread, okay? When I buy these um, embroidery thread sets, okay? Now, when you buy an embroidery thread set, you start off with a little kit and it has all these different colors in it and they're, you know, and you're pretty excited, right? Now, you first started embroidering, so you don't have anything, all right? All you did was buy probably a machine, probably a stack of stabilizer, and then your first box of threads, okay? Well, not only did I buy my first box of thread, but then I started buying other boxes of thread. Now, there were two reasons why I was doing that kind of stuff, okay? I was doing it because I would see these other type of brands out there and I wanted to see what they were like, okay? What I should have did was I should have just went out there and just bought one sprawl, okay, of thread instead of buying a kit of thread. And I'm gonna tell you why. That one sprawl would have already told me about the quality of that thread, if it's something that I would have wanted to continue to use. And when I have purchased that one sprue, I would have made sure that it was a common color, like a black or a brown or a white thread, something that I know I could use in all my designs. If you go ahead and you start buying all these different kits of all these different types of colors of threads, What's going to happen is most of the time, you're just, when you buy the kits, you're just getting the small sprue, okay? You're only getting a small one. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do anything with that. You definitely can. However, though, as you start using your thread, you're going to start, you, you're going to probably need to replace it, okay? Then you may end up looking and seeing, can you find that sprue for that particular manufacturer for that same color. Another thing that I'm finding also is sometimes when you rebuy a kit, 
okay? They use a different type of dye or they change the color of the dye. So the green may not match the same green that you got in your second box than with your first. It's the same number and sometimes it's the same company, but for some reason, the color is off. And I've seen that in certain situations with me and I even see people put that on our Facebook group that they go and they buy a box of threads and then all of a sudden they, they buy another box of the same, right? Because they're probably running out of a lot of the, the color threads. So they figured I'll just get another box. And then next thing you know, the red doesn't look like the red or the green doesn't look like the green or the pink is off. The pink is lighter or darker and stuff like that. And it's just ain't working. So, but me personally, what I did was I started with the sim thread, okay, and the brother three, and those seem to have served me pretty well. I will tell you this, the Madeira thread, I have find to be very, very consistent with their colors, okay? So when it comes to buying the thread, what well, my true recommendation is, we start off with one kit, as you start to run out of threads and you see that those spools start to run low, those the, that color that you're using a lot of, I recommend going and upgrading that color, not going by a whole different kit. Just that color, just, I would go, honestly, I would go in Madeira. I mean, and then I would just go and buy the big sprue. That's what I would do and because their colors seem to always be consistent. Um, the other companies like Synthread, Brothery, I find that sometimes I don't know if they're changing their dye or some hiccup happening while they manufactured it. But in most of the colors, they match okay. But then in some, I find that there's kind of like a hiccup. And the problem that I have with that is that you want to be able to use your sprawl to the very end. And then you want to then pop in the other sprawl. Okay. So, you know, it's like, I don't like wasting thread. All right. Now, the thing is also, is I have bought so many kits that now I have too much thread. And the threads that I have is very overwhelming. All right. It's like, it's to the point where it's kind of like, okay, you know, like I really got to get rid of this thread. So now I'm looking at making designs so that I can use some of this thread and get this off my shelf, but I don't want to like throw them out or, or any, I want to use them. But the thing is, I, it's too many. Okay. I got the nanny thread. I got the glide. I got the, um, uh, somebody told me how to say it. Now I forgot it. it's Floria, Florina, for Florine, that one, the shiny one. Um, and don't overbuy. I overbuy. I overbuy too much. And I, I I don't know. The wedding napkins, when I did my customer's wedding napkins, I thought I wasn't going to have enough thread. So I went online and I bought like four sprules of that color. Do you know that after I was done doing those wedding napkins, I didn't even need any of those four sprules. And I went and I bought all this extra thread for what? Now it's sitting in the box, you know? So now I have to wait till the next customer comes and wants the same type of color of thread on their napkins. So it's just like I overbought. I really did. I, I bought too much. So there is such a thing as buying too much thread, just, just to let you guys know. I mean, it's like, so don't do that, okay? The other thing too, let me tell you, this is something else that I bought too much of. Batting, okay? I went to Joanne's, it was on sale, and I said, oh, it's on sale, let me get the batting. Well, let me tell you, this is a big roll of 20 yards of batting, okay? I have this right now in my closet. Look at this, this thing is huge. I'm over here thinking, okay, oh, I'm going to use all this batting. I'm going to be doing, um, you know, uh, bags, or, or I'm going to do uh oven mitts or you know <laughs> or little cozy bowls and all that kind of stuff and everything you know with what the stuff i got going on and stuff i i haven't even touched this okay and i'm gonna tell you something i've had this roll for over a year and it's still in the original packaging haven't even used it it's 20 yards 
I have even considered cutting it up and, and seeing, should I sell it like two yards of, of batting and, and package them up and maybe sell them? And, you know, I don't know. So I got to find something to do with this. So this was another, like, my regret, big regrets and stuff. So as you can see, as I go through all this stuff, let me put this on the floor this way. As I go through all this stuff, I'm going through stuff that I spent my money on and then at the time, I guess it looked like a good idea, right? And then now I'm looking at it and I'm like, what the heck? Like, what went through your head when you did that? What What were you thinking? What, what did you think you were, a superwoman, you know? And this is the bad thing about this whole thing, okay? Is I look at some of this stuff and I'm thinking, I'm going to have time. I, I want to do this. I'm going to have time, right? I still work full time. And then after I work full time, then I have to run this shop and I have to fill orders. After I fill, you know, orders, I also do the videos for this channel. And after I do the videos, Fridays, I have to do my embroidery happy hour. I am committed to meet with you guys every Friday. I don't care. I don't even, I'll, I'll make up a topic. I don't care. I, I enjoy these Fridays. I'll even do a session of, hey, let's do q and A. Just Q&A. Just, let's just chat. What, what do you have questions on? What do you need help with? I don't care. These Fridays, I love these Fridays, okay? Because it is actually, I, I don't know, I feel like this is a me time for me. It really, truly is. I like hanging out with you guys, okay? So it's like, I am busy. My day is pretty busy. What the heck made me think that I could sew my own pants? And this is the other thing, too. <sighs> It's nice that you can sew your own clothes. I got that. I know that, okay? But when I started to think about fabric is not cheap, okay? Good fabric is not cheap. And then all the time that it took, it took me like a whole day just to trace patterns and then cut them out and everything. All that time. And, and then when I look at these pants that are so simple, I can go to Walmart and get these pants for $11.99, you know, already sewn and stuff like that. So I don't know. I mean, I know it's the joy of sewing and all that kind of stuff. And I got that. Maybe if I didn't have so much going on, maybe I would be a little bit more like, oh, okay, I can do it. But, um, and maybe I'm just stressed right now. I don't know. Maybe what I need to do is just have more drinks while I'm cutting that fabric. I don't know. But yeah, so batting i bought too much of it what was going through my mind i don't know okay so just a lesson learned for you guys don't go overboard okay sometimes something may look like a good deal and then before you know it it's not a good deal it, it's like you know you you bought it and then you're thinking to yourself it's good because that way i have it it's in stock and you know, and, and I have it and I don't have to worry about running out or anything like that. Because that's the stuff that, you know, I tell myself all the time. Oh, I'm not going to run out and everything. Now, I'm going to tell you the goodbyes, though. Goodbye is my pre, pre, pre-wine pre bobbins. Oh, I, I can never have enough of those because I go through them like crazy. Needles, buying needles, I go through those like crazy, too. So I will always consider those fantastic buys because that is stuff you truly never ever ever want to run out of okay you never want to run out of that stuff because it can be bad you know so you know but this kind of stuff you really don't need it you know so it's it's kind of like ah you know all right the the um fifth one twill the twill is twill is, is used usually to make patches okay the problem with the twill okay is that First of all, I overbought. You should be fine. If, if, if you're going to get twill to make patches, they come in all these different colors, right? I didn't know that you really could get away with just basic colors if you want to, right? You know, but I went ahead and I bought all these colors. Why did I do that? Especially when I didn't even have a need to do that, okay? I should have just bought black, white, and gray. And I could have been fine with that. But no, this is what Jeanette does. She buys the bat, the black, the white, the gray, the blue, the red, the purple, the, the, <laughs> the lavender. That's what I bought, okay? So now I'm looking at 
big rolls of twill in my house. So I'm kind of like, okay, how much did I spend on that twill? So that's another thing that can really depress the crap out of you. It's like when you look at stuff, it looks like a good idea. And then you're thinking, oh, well, let me buy this and that, whatever, and stuff like that. And that way I have it. There's no need for it. And I, I, you know, so I got it. So I'm kind of like, this is great. So now I'm thinking like the same thing with the batty. Should I cut it up and sell it? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So it's just, it's the overbuying. That's the overbuying. That's what I'm talking about. Now, this is another one. This is number six. And I'm going to tell you something about number six. At the time, I thought it was a really good buy. I was excited about it because I had mine specially made, okay? And I I was thinking, it was, it was when I was thinking like, you know, I wanted to get a multi-needle machine, but I couldn't afford it. Um, no, I think I had it. But I just wanted, I wanted my single needle machine to serve like a multi-needle machine. But it ain't going, it didn't work that way. It was the riser for my brother, SC1900. Now, there are people out there that do use risers. However, though, it depends on what you're planning on using the riser for. The issue with the riser is that it, you know, you put your machine on top of it and it lifts your machine. Got that. And that works. However, though, the arm on your SC1900, it's not a straight arm like a multi needle machine. Okay. It's a flatbed and, and it has the arm that goes across. So you can't just put like a shirt inside because then you have that arm that's in the way. Unless you're going to embroider like a huge tote bag or something like that, you know, and you're embroidering a lot of those, that is when I say a riser is really beneficial, okay? I spent over, I know it was over $100 for my riser. I put it on my, my desk. I had my SC1900 sitting on it. I was super excited about it. I, you know, then I grabbed a shirt and I went to put it on and it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. It wouldn't go over the arm. So I was pissed. I was like, damn. I was like, I can't use this. I was like, oh. But then I went and I got a bag, a tote bag. The tote bag was too small. So I'm when I when I mean a tote bag, I mean a large one. Okay. And let me go grab it because I, I, I don't want you guys to get confused about what I mean. Okay. Because I think you're going to need a visual. And I got Mello right in the way. Mello, hold on. I got to get around you. I want you guys to see what I'm talking about. All right. Here I am. This is the bed of your SC1900, right? So, of course, I'm not going to bring the whole machine with me. So, just imagine, okay? So, you're sitting here with me, right? And I got the machine. This is the bed. The riser lifts up the machine, and it lifts it so that whatever you put over it, it goes under it as well, all right? The problem is this arm, it's long. So not only does the, the, the item have to be able to fit this way, you have this arm right here. So you need something that's wide. You know what I'm saying? So the riser did not work for me. Um, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It looks great. I got the riser that came with the draw. And I even see some people have their hubbies make them a riser. I don't know if people are like really using the riser on a regular basis or if they're really using it all the time. I thought it was a great game changer at the time. I mean, I was just like really excited about it. Oh, let me put this here. Sorry, I'll be right back. Um, yeah, I was excited about it. But um, when I went to try to use it, Okay, because I wanted to make videos on using the SC1900 with a riser. I found that I had a very difficult time 
finding items that would fit nicely so that you can actually embroider comfortably with the riser. So obviously they are popular though. A lot of people are buying them and they're using them, okay? I personally just haven't had found the opportunity to actually, or, or whatever project for me to use the one that I want. So to me, that was like, ugh. I was like, okay. So I have it tucked away in my closet, okay? Um, I'm gonna, I, I am not going to really give up on it. I'm sure there's gotta be something, you know? The thing is, if you have something that's flat, like a towel, tea towel, you don't need a riser. You don't need a riser because you got a flat bed. All you got to do is just float it on top and you're good to go, right? You know, I mean, the whole purpose of the riser is to lift the machine up so that you can have something go over on top and on the bottom, you know, but it just didn't work, okay? And stuff. And then look, this is another, this is me embroidering today, okay? I was in, I was trying to embroider another baby gown, okay? I didn't watch the machine. Just want to share. And I ended up embroidering the back to the front. So ain't that something? Ain't that cute? So this is another regret I have. This was my regret for today. I tell you, I was like, oh, I can't believe that happened. What the heck? And then, you know, you look and I, I can't I can't get it out. So this is ruined, you know, and this pisses me off when this happens because it's a perfectly good blank and blanks are not cheap. These were these were not one of the cheap ones. These were I actually bought this from a blank shop. OK, so they cost me about like seven bucks a piece. So this is seven bucks that just is going in the garbage. So I got to cut it up and throw it out and. Yeah, it's nothing I can do about it. I mean, it's, it's just ruined. I can't even use the fabric for anything, or I can't think of anything to use it for. So that that sucks, you know? So I'm like, ugh, okay. So the riser, which was number six, which I know some folks will probably be so disappointed in it because they're probably like, damn, I thought that was a good buy. No, it's not. All right, no, we're moving on along. Okay, number seven, embroidery designs. What are you talking about? I'm talking about when you are going through all these websites and you look at all these designs and you go, oh my God, that's cute. That's cute. Oh, I like that. That's cute. That's nice. Oh, I like that. Oh, I want to do that. I want that. You go, you click, you buy it, and then you do nothing with it. I got plenty of those. I got plenty of those. Oh my God. I have designs that I have purchased that I say I'm going to use that for a kitchen towel for my shop or, oh, my God, I could use a portion of that design and design something different and all that kind of stuff and did nothing, did nothing with it. It's just, uh, so be careful when you're buying these embroidery designs. And another thing, too, I one of the things that I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, how you could you feel that way about that? Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I feel the way I feel in the hoop designs. I am not a fan on some of them. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I have a girlfriend and she just turned, she just became a grandma a couple of weeks ago and stuff. And, you know, I decided I'm going to make some stuff for her, right? And her grandson's name is Jack, right? And cute baby. She sent me a picture and everything. So she's like super excited, right? So I'm like, oh, so, you know. It's really fun. You know, it's great when your friends have babies because I don't have a baby in my family, okay? I, there's nobody, nobody's popping a kid, okay? I don't know what it is. I think everybody just says it's inflation and all that crap. Nobody's giving birth, okay? Every, everybody wants to stay. Oh, my umbrella fell in here. Everybody wants to stay, um, you know, stay without kids. When I talk to Carlito, he says he doesn't want any. So I'm like, well, so I guess I have to get another dog. I don't know. Well, anyway, I get excited because if my friends have kids and all that kind of stuff, then it gives me an excuse to try out embroidering things for babies, right? Well, I bought this in the hoop project for baby bibs. And this is how it came out. Now. This is the thing. 
I asked her, because once I was done, this is the in the hoop. This thing could barely fit through my hand. And the thing that went through my mind was, mm, this is really small. Now, the last time I was with a baby, it was like 22 years ago, okay? Because my son is now going to turn 23 in about two months. So that tells you how long I've been around babies and stuff like that. So I asked my girlfriend, I said, hey, is this going to work? Because this looks like more like a bid for a doll, right? And she was like, um, you're going to want a bigger, a bigger neck. So my thing was, I was like, this is great because this was actually um, in the hoop, right? And it was like a set of bibs. They had like five different bibs and each of the bibs was like a different size. This is actually the big size, okay? This is supposed to be the large size. Now, this thing is tiny, okay? Very, very tiny. So my biggest regret, and I'm thinking to myself, I think what I need to do is just go to Walmart, buy a cheap bib, trace the bib, cut out the fabric, and just sew it myself. That's what I think I'm going to do. Because sometimes some of these in-the-hoop projects, is it's just not working, okay? Now, I have also seen, like, some in-the-hoop projects where they do little, um, you know, little pouches and stuff like that i gotta be honest okay i sometimes don't like the way they look i think i, I don't know it's just the, I, I think the way the square looks it just doesn't look right to me and it could be the material maybe it's the vinyl that some people use i don't know but i kind of like it when people actually cut out the sewing patterns and actually sew the stuff together than doing the in the hoop projects However, though, there are some in the hoop projects that I think are just freaking adorable and that's the way to go, okay, is projects when you do stuff like this. This is something that Miss Banks did for me, okay, as a gift, which I love it, okay, and I think these are like these little notebook covers, oh my God. This is beautiful, 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 beautiful. In the Who projects like these are fantastic. This is the little pen holder that she made for me. These are like fantastic. I use this to keep my diary of my embroidery machine. So anytime I have, you know, just a little tip for you guys. Anytime I have an error message or something funky is happening with my machine, I always write down the date, um, what machine it happened on, what needle, and what was I doing and everything on here, okay? The reason why I do this is so that the guy, when he comes, Justin, when Justin comes to service my machines, he knows I keep a diary. So I'll just give him this book, and he looks through there, and he sees the type of issues that I've kind of experience with the, the machine. Like if I had some wiper errors, what needle did I, you know, was I working off of, um, you know, and all kinds of things. So that way he could kind of sense, oh, well, she's having a lot of wiper errors with the 10 needle machine. Let me check the sensors on the 10 needle machine because maybe one of the sensors could be going bad or something like that. You know what I mean? So I like to do that. And she, when she heard about that, she made me this little notebook. So I think these in the hoop projects are really cute, okay? Because they're very unique and I love the way they stitch out. Very, very solid looking. However, though, when I'm you're doing in the hoop projects that are kind of like this, and it could be maybe the design that I bought. I don't know. It could be that, okay? I'm sure there are, there's so many out there that maybe it could have been better, but I just not a fan. I'm just not a fan of it. I'm just not and stuff, you know? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. So some of my embroidery designs, um, I kind of regret. Now, you could argue and you can say, you know, Jeanette, embroidery designs are not that expensive. And, and yeah, well, this is the thing. Depends where you go too. 
Sometimes there are some websites where the embroidery designs can cost you about seven, eight bucks, okay? And then you have some that will sell it for like a dollar or two dollars. But the bottom line is it's still money, okay? And the thing is, if it's not a design that you are going to actually use, okay, and you're not going to actually like stitch out and do whatever, then to me, you're wasting money. And I, me personally, I know that I have wasted some money on designs because I have actually like for the season, sometimes I'll say, oh, that's a cute reef or, oh, that's cute for Thanksgiving or that's cute for Halloween or whatever. And then I start, you know, doing all this stuff. And before you know it, I, you know, I, I buy all these designs and, and I didn't even, I didn't even use them. I didn't even use, not even to, to, to do my own decor did I use these designs. I just spent $3 and I have the design tucked away. Now, I can always use them at another time, yes. But the thing is, let's get real, okay? As time goes on, what ends up happening, because I know Jeanette, okay? She's going to start looking at more new designs because, you know, new designs are always coming out. And then she's going to say, oh, that's cute. That's cute. And I'm going to end up buying those. And then I'm going to forget about what I had. So one of the things that I did, which I shouldn't have did because it pissed me off when I did it, was that I, I went through all my designs, let me tell you, all of them. And I started looking, you know, because I put all my designs, I, I have them pretty organized, right? So I have them all designed by category and everything like that. So I went through all the designs, okay? Because I was like, oh, how much of these designs am I really using, okay? So I go and I look through all of them. And every time I saw them, all I saw was dollars. And I was thinking, how much did I freaking waste on all these designs that I ain't even use? I tell you. This drink isn't even strong enough for the amount of money that I spent on this stuff. I'm like, oh, my God. And you know what's so sad? I'm supposed to be busting my butt to pay Cardinals College. And I'm over here spending all this money. So, yeah, terrible. It's just terrible. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, whatever. All right, let's go on to number eight, okay, before I throw myself out the window or something. Number eight. I regret buying boxes, okay? I used I started buying some boxes because I thought, you know, maybe it'd be nicer to ship items in boxes than using the shipping bag. So I had a little moment. I said, you know what? Let me buy a couple of boxes, okay? Don't do that. The boxes add to the price of the shipment. I learned that real fast. So what ends up happening is you're paying more on shipping. Don't do it. If the item that you have is not, you know, can it is bendable and it's not going to break or anything like that, do the bag shipping, okay? You can do it in the poly bags. It's not a big deal. Just make sure that you package it well. No, excuse me. Just make sure that you package it well so that that way it doesn't get messed up in the, the packaging. However, though, if you are embroidering hats, okay, and I'm talking about all hats, not beanies, I'm talking about baseball hats. Oh, I don't have a hat by me. Structure or non-structure, get a box. Do not ship that in a ship in, in a bag. And I'm gonna tell you why. Every baseball hat has the bill, right? Okay, and the bill is that hard part that comes out in the baseball hat, right? You do not want that to get damaged and you do not want that to get folded up or anything like that during the shipping. Because what ends up happening is when that, when that bag hits that customer and if that hat is bent in any type of way, they're not going to blame the post office. They're going to blame you because they're going to say that you did not ship that um that hat correctly okay if you have a hat that's like this yes use the use the polygon a beanie use the bag um this use the bag okay but if you're going if you have a baseball hat 
okay? A cap. And it has that hard thing, use the box. Trust me, use the box. You do not want that bent in any shape shape at all. A lot of people are very particular about your their hats, especially the baseball hats, okay? I know my dad was, okay? My dad was very particular about his hats. He, he, that he had a special place that he would put them. He did not like anybody folding or misshaping his hat in any type of way. He, you know, he put it on a certain way. He liked it clean and all that kind of, He was very, very particular about his hats. A lot of people are, okay? So you do not want to take a hat like that and put it in a shipping bag and then run the risk that it's going to get bent or dent in any type of way, all right? But I, what I did was I bought boxes, not just for the hats. I bought them for the blankets. I bought them for shirts. I bought them for the kitchen towels. And then when I started to print out my shipping labels, I ended up finding out that I was paying a lot for shipping, way more, way more than if I was using the bags. And it's all because that bag adds weight, okay, to your shipment. So what ends up happening is you end up paying more. Now, does it does it give it a nicer appearance? Yeah, it does. It does. It it, it 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 does make it look more professional and all that kind of stuff. But let's be real. Is the customer really paying for the shipping? Is that what they're buying? No, they're buying your product. So if your product gets there and it's not damaged and it's perfect, I wouldn't even go there. I wouldn't I wouldn't even bother with the extra. Mm -mm. No, it's it's just you're wasting money. You're wasting money. So now I have boxes. I have lots of boxes. Now I use those boxes for gifts. So now when I send gifts to somebody or something like that, then I'll go ahead and I'll use the box for that. But I don't use them for customers at all, unless I'm shipping hats. Then I use the seven by seven by seven, seven seven seven, uh, size hats. I mean boxes for those hats. That's what I do. Okay, number nine, blanks. Let's talk about some blanks. A lot. I know a lot of folks um, buy blanks. When you're running a business, you're going to need them. You are going to need them. You need to have them in stock if you're running a business because the thing is, if an order comes in, you got to fill it, right? However, though, when you are working on your business, you have a good idea of what is selling and what is not selling. One of the problems that I see a lot of people do, um, especially me, I've done it myself, okay? I did it with these knitted blankets, okay? I have, um, you know, I bought a whole, I think I bought 50 of them, okay? I got like 50 of them, but, but in all fairness, I just got them. And I just put them on my Etsy shop. So we'll see if they sell or not, okay? But um, right now they're just sitting there, okay? So, and I have also bought like children's shirts and stuff like that. I didn't buy too many of them. But the reason why I do have the children's shirts is because like I said, you know, a lot of my friends have grandkids now, right? They're all having grandkids. And if um, one of the grandkids is having a birthday or if they're, you know, some kind of special occasion and stuff like that as a gift, you know, if I know their size, their shirt size, I'll grab one of those shirts and I'll make them a shirt as a gift. Okay. I personally, I don't, I don't sell those shirts, you know, for kids and stuff like that, but they are, you know, but at one time I was thinking about it. But what ended up happening was when I went online, I saw that that was a very saturated market, okay? It was very, very saturated. And it got to the point where people now are turning more into the sublimation of shirts than they are kind of if embroidery. Now, people are still buying embroidery shirts, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're not. But what I'm saying is it's going both ways, okay? And the thing is, if you were to go and type in birthday shirt on Etsy, you will find like zillions of shirts out there and at different price range. And what's gonna, you know, and, and one of the things that I see 
is that, you know, you're going to see a lot of people, they, you know, they have the price range is so different. Like you can get one for $35 and then somebody else is selling them for 19 bucks, right? So it depends really on the consumer. You know, sometimes the consumer will say, well, I really want a good quality shirt. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they'll they'll go for the high end or they'll go for the middle price. But if, you know, then you have some that are very, very price conscious. And then what they will do is they'll say, you know what, it's a birthday shirt. You know, and that's really me. That's how I kind of think. I would be like, okay, well, Cornelia, you know, it's a birthday shirt. You're only going to wear it for one day. We just want a nice little shirt for that one day occasion for you to wear for your party. And um, so we're going to get the, the the cheap one, you know, the $19.99. As long as it looks decent, it looks nice and whatever, I'll do that, you know. Um, because you got to remember, too, the kid's not going to be uh, one years old forever, right? And kids grow. They grow real fast. So before you know it, you know, they fit in the shirt today. And then next week, they don't fit in the shirt anymore. So you know, um, be careful with your blanks. You know, I, I know me personally, I mean, sometimes I look in my closet and I'm kind of like, Ugh. I look at these blanks and it's like, I want them moved. The only blanks that I have a ton of, but they actually move are my dinner napkins and my kitchen towels. Those move like crazy. And my baby blankets move a lot too from the um hurling blankets not so much the um you know the knitted blankets because the knitted blankets i just started doing that you know what i mean but you know some of my biggest regrets is getting a lot of the blanks you know because i've actually gotten even into buying little cosmetic bags right because i was like oh i can buy a cosmetic bag and i can embroider the, the kid's name on it or the person's name on it maybe that'll sell and then i'll you know you'll buy little stack golf towels i do have a lot of golf towels at one time i was selling a lot of golf towels okay people were asking me for golf towels like crazy and this is another thing got to be careful about also sometimes customers will ask you for something that you don't have in stock and because you don't want to lose the sale you'll go ahead and you'll order it okay just so you could get that sale instead of standing your ground and saying nope this is what i got I've done that. And I've done that with the golf towels and stuff. I used to just buy the gray and the black golf towels. Now I have gray, black, pink, red, blue. I got all these colors, okay? And now they're just sitting there, all right? All because I had a customer that came and said, hey, can I get a golf towel in pink? Oh, can I get one in red? Can I get one in white? Can I get one in this and that? And the next thing you know, instead of, you know, just telling them, no, these are, these are the ones that I focus on which that's what I do with my kitchen towels, okay? Because don't get me wrong. I have had some customers come to me and say, hey, do you have it in gray? Do you have the kitchen towel in brown? Do you have it? No, I only offer ivory and white. Those are the only two colors that I offer. I don't offer any other color, okay? That's the other thing. And you know what? I've even seen a couple of people that sell shirts, right where they come on they say i only offer one color okay because what happens when you offer way too much options you end up with a big inventory okay so you know and stick with stick with what sells stick with what sells if you're not sure that something's gonna sell just buy one buy one and water it and then put it out there. And then when it sells, that's when you, and you start seeing that there is a market out there for something, then you go ahead and you can buy in more volume. But for you to go ahead and just buy like, oh, um, you know, like, like I did, okay. You know, where I just came out and I just said, hey, look, I'm going to do makeup cases. So instead of buying one, I went and I bought, oh, let me get a pack of 15. So I ordered one. I put it on the shop and everything didn't sell. So now I got 14 just sitting there. Now, I don't want to just put the negative stuff because there's always a bright side for everything, okay? I mean, I got 14 cosmetic bags out there. So if I ever want to give a gift to someone, I can easily pull out one of those cosmetic bags and border their name on it. Okay, and give it as a gift. Okay, so, you know, don't, if you have stuff in, in there, like, you know, if you're looking around your sewing room right now and you're going, 
oh damn she's right look at all these blanks that i have i don't want you to feel like oh shoot i got all this stuff and now it's just garbage it's not garbage okay you know holidays are coming the holidays are coming okay so look at the blanks that you have okay and if you see something that you know you bought it's no longer selling it's not working out okay well then guess what then you know what all the women in my family are all gonna get a cosmetic bag with their name on it and i'll just put a different and i'll use those little embroidery designs that i haven't used okay that i bought and i will actually put the embroidery design on there with their little name on it and make it really cute and there's a gift and there there you go i made the, a purchase of it okay so you know i just wanted to share that with you guys okay the tenth one all right oh it's nine o'clock okay the tenth one because you guys know how i roll for, for hour i like to give you guys the information and then i hang out with you guys the rest of the night okay the tenth one the last one fabric okay that buying fabric with absolutely no plan in mind i heard somebody come out and say hey you know if you go to the store and you see fabric you really don't know what you would want out of it then just buy half a yard well, I'll tell you what, I got so much fabric, that's half a yard. Don't know what I'm doing with it. Didn't know what I was doing with it when I went to the store and said, oh, this fabric is cute. And even after I got my half a yard and came home, I still don't know what the heck I'm going to do with it. Okay, I'm looking at it. And all I say when I look at it is, oh, this is so pretty. That's all I'm saying. No plans, no nothing. This is what I'm telling you, okay? This is what I'm going to do for now. If you are going to buy fabric, have a purpose. Know what you are buying it for and know that that's what you are really, truly, honestly going to do. Don't buy it if you don't need it. The store is not going to run out of fabric. There, if anything, they will come up with different designs and more designs, and it's going to look really nice. And it's not the last sale they're going to have. They're always going to have sales. How many times do you go to the mailbox and Joanne sends you a little pamphlet that says fabrics on sale, okay? Do you have to buy it now? No, you don't need to buy it now. So put the fabric back on the shelf. I am telling you, look, I have fabric back there, okay, that it's like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. What what did I think I was going to make with this stuff? What? Okay? And this is the other thing too. That 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 little rule about oh, if you don't know what you want to do with that fabric, just buy half a yard. Really? I can't use half a yard to get, make these pants, okay? I mean, some of these projects require more than half a yard. So if you don't know what you're going to use it for, and let's say in the future, then you know what you're going to use it for, you may not have enough. And then when you go back to the store to buy more, they might not have any more of that fabric. So you're just stuck. So I'm stuck with a lot of half a yard of fabric that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably like, Oh, Jeanette, that's a little rough. You know, you can make little coin cases and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. You can, okay? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. This came out of a half a yard of fabric, okay? And I still got fabric left, you know what I'm saying? Because it didn't take a whole half a yard. But this was fabric that I bought thinking, oh, this is cute for Thanksgiving fabric. No clue what I was going to do for Thanksgiving. I didn't know what I was going to use the fabric for, okay? All I saw was, oh, this is cute fall fabric, all right? Well, it has been sitting in this sewing room for two years of fall, okay? So this is like the second fall season that it's coming up to. And finally, I was able to take it and put this on a bib. Okay, that hopefully I'm going to have to hurry up and give it to my girlfriend because I don't want her grandson to outgrow this because this is so tiny. I don't know. It's, it's probably like for a newborn and stuff. But it's just like, it, I, honestly, guys, I'm telling you, I, I, I regret. I, I, I don't know who, who said that, okay? And I'm not blaming them because, hell, I mean, nobody put a gun to my head and said, you got to buy it. You know, nobody did that. I bought it, okay? 
Um, I bought that, but uh, I I no. If you if you if there is no plan, then don't buy it. Don't buy it. Keep the money in your pocket, okay? You know why? Because that money could buy you needles that you are going to need. It's going to buy you bobbins that you are going to need. Stabilizer. I never regret buying stabilizer. Never regret buying bobbins. I never regret buying needles because that is something that you're going to need for every single project. Every single project. It's not going to steer you wrong, okay? Put the money there, all right? And buy it when you need it too. Don't go ahead and buy like a whole bunch of stabilizer and then you have a whole room full of stabilizer, okay? Just buy enough that you, when you go to make a project, you're going to be able to use it, okay? Don't go crazy and stuff. But I am telling you, I have, those are my 10 regrets. Those are my 10 regrets. Now, let me tell you, out of the 10 that I mentioned to you, what is my biggest regret? The first one was the bobbin winder. Had no business buying that. The sewing patterns. Oh, God. Too much of the thread. <sighs> the batting. The twill. My riser. The embroidery designs that I'm not using at all. Okay. Boxes for the shipping. Some blanks. And fabric out of all 10, the most deepest that I regret of all of them. Oh, I think that batting that I bought, because that batting I've had been holding on to it for three years. It's got to go. I got to do something with it. I got to come up with a plan. Okay. I really do. And then the second, the fabric. Why, I mean, why all the fabric, okay? A lot of people buy it for appliques and stuff like that. I was buying it because I want to sew, okay? But I am, I'm going to be honest with you, even with a sewing guide and everything, I have trouble sewing straight. Well, maybe, you know, I, I mean, I should stop drinking while I'm sewing, but the thing is, it's just ridiculous. It's just, I'm like, oh God, I just think of all this wasted money. And I'm like, oh, I can't, you know. And I got to put cardio to school. You know, cardio's on its last year, you know. And then I got, I'm not going to say it's bad news because it's not bad news. I'm okay with it. You know, Cardito kind of mentioned he wants to change his major on his last year. So I'm kind of like, oh. But. I would have loved to have seen him graduate, so I don't think he's going to graduate and stuff because he wants to change his major. But um, one of the things that I told my son was, you know what? You're 22 years old. At 22 years old, you're not supposed to um, rule the world. Take your time. Enjoy your life. Figure out what you want to do with your life. And whatever it is, make sure you're happy. So... So that just means I'm really going to have to hustle because when he's ready to figure it out, of course, you know how mamas are. I got to make sure that he is going to be okay. And that's what I'm going to do. So I guess I better I better stop spending money on some stuff <laughs> and start bringing home more money because Carlito going to need it. So anyway, guys, those are my 10. And... Don't know if you guys agree or disagree or whatever, but, you know, um, yeah, I just wanted to, to really just share this and just be flat out honest with some of the stuff that I have bought and I look at and I'm like, what the hell, you know? Now, if you notice, out of the 10, I do not mention any of my machines. I don't regret them, Okay. Now, there are some machines that I use less than others, okay? Like I have my two sergers, and I wish I used my sergers more, okay? But it goes back to me wanting to sew. I have my Juki uh, quilting uh, machine. I have the 2010Q. Um, I use that to sew this today. I mean, I love that machine, and I love my SC1900. I still use it. 
The machines that I use the most in this room, honestly, is my two multi-needle machines. Those things are on almost every day. And you know what? You really think about it. There is another little purchase that I kind of bought that I a little bit regret when I bought machine covers, okay? Now, machine covers are really good because they keep the dust off your machine. But you have to leave so that you can put the cover on the machine so the dust can collect, okay? Well, I am in this room every day, okay? And the machines are running every day. So I bought the dust covers, but I really haven't had the chance to put the dust covers on. However, they were on when, um, when I had to go visit my family and when my dad passed, you know, I mean, that I was away for quite some time. So it served its purpose at that time. But, um, you know, and I figured when I do go on vacation or something like that, then I could um, use the covers and stuff like that. But in a way, I kind of sometimes like, oh, why did I spend so much money on these covers? But honestly, you know, you do, I, I do use them when I'm, when I'm away. The problem is I'm never away. I'm always here. I'm always working and, you know. But, but I love doing this stuff. I really do. I really, really, really do. So, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy embroidering and I actually enjoy sewing and all that kind of stuff. And what is up with this bib? I mean, it kills me. I'm like, this thing is so small. Am I really so off that babies are this small? It's like, I feel like going to a hospital now and say, hey, can this fit the babies? You know, <laughs> because I don't, I, you know, I'm off. I have not. I haven't held a baby since Carlito was a baby, actually, you know, um, and usually I'm not one to visit babies and stuff because I always say babies are trapped. You know, they always got that new baby smell and all that kind of stuff and everything. So even when I was young, if somebody had a baby, I would just be like, oh, OK, and they would say, you want to hold the baby? Mm -mm. <laughs> I never wanted to hold the baby. So like that. It's like, uh, you know, I was afraid I was going to drop him. So I didn't know they were gonna, that it was this small, but. I don't know. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm going to go to Walmart and I'm going to pick myself up a new uh, bib and I'm going to trace it out and I'm going to see if that will um, that will work. You know, maybe those bibs are actually bigger and stuff. Um, this in the hoop bib, for some reason, I just feel like it just uh, it's just too small. So anyway, guys, I am going to go down the chat because it is way past nine. Okay, and as always, I, I always like my hour to go uh, talking about the topic. I do want to talk to you guys about some administrative stuff too, okay? You guys know that every year, okay, I always host um, a gift exchange for the holidays. I will be doing that again this year, all right? So, um, but the thing is, I am going to limit that gift exchange to probably a certain amount of people. Um, we have been growing uh, a lot. The first time that I did this gift exchange, we had about like 30 people that participated. Last year, we had 60. Um, we're growing a lot. And also with the gift exchange, I always personally like to not just give a gift to the person that I'm assigned to, but I actually give a gift to all the people that are in the exchange. So last year, it was pretty challenging because we had double the amount of people. So I had to make gifts for about 60 people. And thankfully, I had my girlfriend that she helped and she stepped in to help me um, make the mugs for everybody and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's a lot. It's, it, it is a lot. So, you know, I have to, you know, tell you guys I am human. I would love to be able to do it for like 100 people if I could, but it's just me. And, um, you know, I really wanted to um, to continue to do this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit it to a certain number. OK, so I will let you guys know when it's going to be opened. All right. And then that way, um, you know, I, I have to I don't know what number it's going to be yet. I don't know if I'm going to allow, you know, 40, 50 or 60 or, or more in the um, a gift exchange. But, um, you know. It's going to be the same like I usually host it. Um, I'm going to open it up, have people join. Everyone that joins, like I said, the uh, you know, I want you guys to truly commit because the whole purpose of this gift exchange is for crafters to gift 
to other crafters, okay? Because I feel that, you know, and the reason, and, and just to share with you guys why I do this is because when you are a crafter, right? Sometimes you don't have friends that also craft as well. And you always giving people gifts that are very unique and, you know, stuff that you've made. And the other person that receives that gift has this big feeling like, wow, this person made this for me, right? Unfortunately, though, sometimes when somebody gives you a gift, all right, and I'm not saying that it's a bad gift, but a lot of times because they're not crafters and because they don't sew and they don't do this stuff, the best they could do is to give you like a gift card or go to a store or something like that, right? But it is a different type of feeling when you receive a gift that you know that someone had took the time to actually create for you, okay? It's really special, okay? Like when Miss Banks made this book for me, okay? I mean, I will kill anyone that does anything to this book because I know the time that it took Miss Banks to do this for me. The same thing with the mug rug that she made and when Harmony made me that face mask and um, Sandra made me the, the portrait of Mello that I have back there. That is an embroidered portrait that he, she did of, of Mello. Um, those gifts are so precious, okay? Because so much goes into them, all right? The thought, the, the making, you know, like uh, the Crafty Puerto Rican, like for my birthday this year, she made me a birthday shirt with rhinestones on it. And let me tell you, I have it. And I don't care that it's no longer my birthday. I still wear that shirt. And I, you know, and you're probably going to see me at the Sewing and Quilt Show wearing that shirt. And people are going to be like, oh, it's your birthday? I'm going to be like, yeah, <laughs> it is. You know, <laughs> I mean, because the thing is somebody made that for you. You know what I'm saying? It's special. Okay. It is something, something so, so special. So the reason why I do that is because I want other crafters to have that feeling. Okay. So because of that, I ask that the people that join seriously, you must create the gift for that person. Because as you are creating that gift for that person, that person is making a gift for someone else. And I want everyone to share in that really unique, awesome feeling, okay? The other thing also, and this is not mandatory, is that last year, one of the things that I did was I said, hey, let's all meet and, and show off our gifts, okay? Which a lot of you guys participate, and I thought that was a lot of fun, where we got to actually show the different types of gifts we got. And, and a lot of us made some awesome stuff, okay? And I think that is like so cool and so like unique. I just love it, okay? So I am gonna do that. And I think this is something that I'm going to host from now on every year. Everyone seems to love it. Everybody really likes it. I really love the engagement and I love seeing the creativity and stuff and all the smiles that people get when they, they open up their gifts and they see that. So I want to keep that going because that is to me is the most special thing, you know? So, um, you know, so I wanted to share that with you. Another thing too is we have the sewing um, quilt show that's coming up, okay? It's coming up September 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, I know that, you know, for those of you guys that have watched Miss Shirley, um, and I think her channel is so something. Oh, God, I forgot. Oh, Miss Shirley, I'm so sorry. But anyway, <laughs> she she does her lives on Tuesdays, okay, at 8 o'clock and stuff. Please watch her. She's really, really good. I really like the information that she shares. But um, I know Miss Shirley's going to be there as well, okay? And um, she's going to be leaving. She's going to be there Thursday and, and Friday night. Saturday, she heads back to Maryland, right? So what I did was I actually booked a hotel, um, a hotel room for me for Friday night so that everyone that's going to the Sewing and Quilt ex, um, Expo, we, we're going to plan on meeting up on Friday, maybe like go to a restaurant and eat, have a good time. Um, you know, and I'll probably sneak a couple of, uh, bottles of wine in my truck, you know? So anyway, so <laughs> that way we can have some fun. So, um, and because 
I know knowing us, okay, because we all like to hang out, okay, um, I kind of figured, okay, we're probably going to have too much fun. And it is an hour away drive for me. I actually booked a hotel room for me on the 29th. So that way I can just hang out with you guys because I do have a class on Saturday. I got to be there um, Saturday at 1030 for my Surger 911 class. So, you know, just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, now, the details of where we're going to be on Friday we don't have that down packed yet, okay? But we will, you know, I'm, I'll get with Miss Shirley and um, we'll figure something out, okay? We'll, we'll figure something out. I'll probably put something on Facebook. And, you know, so please make sure that you are connected to the Facebook page, um, the group that says um, Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. If you're on that Facebook group, that's where I plan on posting it. Or I think Miss Shirley also has her own Facebook group. Then she'll, um, I'll make sure she posts it on her end as well. So that way we can come out and say, okay, guys, at this time, we all meet at this location. And this is the restaurant we're all going to be eating at, okay? And then we can all, like, meet there and hang out and really just have a good time and stuff like that. So, um. Yeah, so I had those two announcements. I should have said it in the beginning, but hey, what the heck? I mean, you know, you guys will all get the 411. So anyway, I really wanted to tell you guys about the gift exchange because I do plan on doing that because I know that some of you guys have reached out to me and have actually asked me, are you going to do the gift exchange this year? Yes, I am. I, I, I'm going to do this every year and stuff like that. And um, I have to actually work with you know this drink is kind of weak i'm tell you it's very weak i don't know if it's that my alcohol tolerance is really high and if it is then i guess i'm gonna have to go to aa when i retire and stuff so that way you know because i mean but this is like it's not working for me i don't really feel anything i don't feel anything so mm, oh my god all right so i must have a, a problem okay so I wanted to share that with you guys and stuff. Um, yeah, the gift exchange. I mean, that really means a lot to me. I'm really glad I started that because it has really, um, you know, people really, really enjoyed that. And last year was the first time that I did an embroidery happy hour and asked people to come online and on video with me and show what they got and the things that you guys um you know that that showed and the things that I saw that were created I was like oh my god like somebody made a wallet for someone napkins towels um you know I was just like I was blown away I was really blown away by the creativity bags I was like oh that's that's nice. You know, I mean, it's just like, I was really, really, and I want to keep that going. I really want to keep that going because I really like the community that we've built. Um, it's such a caring community. Um, you know, and I do try to work really hard in ensuring that the Facebook group that we have is a solid group. Um, I know there's a lot of, you know, crawlers out there and crawlers mean i mean you know scammers and all that kind of stuff and everything like that i do actively look at the activity log of the, the the facebook group on a regular basis if i do see posts that i feel are you know not uh legit and all that kind of stuff i do remove them if i see that there are accounts out there that are phony because you're going to notice a lot of people are creating phony accounts on facebook um uh, you know i will you remove them from the group and everything. If you guys see anything fishy in there, something that doesn't look right or whatever, just let me know. Please report it. I do look at that. I do respond. Some of you guys have even reached out to me and I'm, I just take care of it. Okay. So, you know, I am definitely, um, you know, looking forward to, uh, you know, to, to this year doing the, uh, gift exchange. I think that's going to be so much fun. And, um, 
Yeah, so anyway, so I am going to go through the chat, guys. I want to say hi to all you guys as always, you know, um, you know, because make sure that I answer any of you guys' questions or any concerns and stuff like that. As always, I see Miriam Sassy. Hey, Robin, how are you? Hey, Danny. Hey, Barb, how are you doing? Hey, Angela and Stitches. Cracking Puerto Rican, how are you doing? Hey, Jenny. Um... Let me see. And I see you guys are saying hi to each other. That's like so cool. I really feel like we've created like our own little family here. And that is like so awesome and stuff. Hey, Deborah and Sharon, Terry. I see Emma and Janet. Hey, Judy Bauer. How are you? I see Eartha and Julie Allison. How are you guys doing? Happy Friday, everybody. And you know what? It's a long weekend, too. <laughs> Um, hey, Tammy, how are you? I see Peggy, Karen, Veronica, Annette, Olivia, Marina, how are you doing? Uh, let me see. Uh, Angela and Stitches, she says she uses, oh my goodness, look at that. So it's a plus for her. She says, I use the Wobbin um, winder all the time for the Juki. I found out from another YouTuber that you can use the magnetic bobbins in the Juki. Yes, and you can also use the magnetic bobbins on the Brother SC1900 as well, okay? You you know, they they do work on there. So, um, yeah, but for some reason, I just, I can't get that thing to work, okay? I, I just... I'm going to hold on to it, and maybe one day I will have the time that I can sit down there and actually do it. Maybe maybe what I can do, too, is maybe I'll reach out to Miss Banks, and maybe I can go pay her a visit. Maybe she knows how to do it because she has been sewing for a long time, so I'm sure she probably has one. I'll have to reach out to her and ask her. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, oh, yes, the hurricane, Marlene. Yes, I hope those... Um, um, guys that are in Florida, I hope you guys are okay and, and everything, um, you know, is, is all right and stuff. You know, I was in Hurricane Andrew years back. That was like the first time I visited Nancy in Florida and stuff. And then after that hurricane, I didn't go back to Florida for like nine years. Yep. I was like, well, this place ain't for me. You know, I was like, wee. Um, <laughs> Olivia says, sometimes the solution is worse than the problem. And that's how I kind of felt with that. <laughs> and that's why I said, I'm just buying the pre-wine ones. That's it. I'm done. Hey, Eartha, how are you? Oh, Miss Max, happy birthday. It's her birthday month, guys. That's so cool. Um. Oh, look at that. And it looks like somebody, look, Robin even put down in there, she says she uses the bobbin winder right on her machine. And you know what? I, I don't know why I got it. I really don't. Because you, you're right. I mean, the machines have, my Juki has its own bobbin winder, and it works great. The SC1900 bobbin winder. Why did I buy that? Why did I feel that I needed to do that? I don't know. I, I don't know. It was just, it was a moment and stuff. Hey, Jackie, how are you? Um, let's see. Everybody loves the magnetic bobbins. They, yep. I, I have so many of them and, you know, but you know, one year I almost ran out and I'll make sure I make sure I'm always in stock now for that and stuff. Oh, let the party begin. That's right. It's Miss Max's birthday month. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Hey, Kim, how are you? Let's see. I see Deborah, Jackie, Olivia. Go for it, Mel. Oh, yeah. Olivia, Melo is, um, look at this. And he left his bone here. So for you guys that don't know how big it is, this is Melo's bone. I hear him coming. He must have known I picked it up. There he is. See? See? He knows I picked up his bone. Is this yours? Is this your bone? Oh, excuse me. Let me put it down. Sorry. All right. I won't touch it. I won't touch it. Sorry about that. He's sensitive about his bone. <laughs> You're sensitive, aren't you? Sensitive about your bone. I know, Papa. I know. 
I'll leave your bone alone. All right, so see Olivia, you had to bring up his bone. <laughs> Don't blame me. It was Olivia. It was. She asked about the bone. <laughs> hey, Sunrise, how are you? Um. Oh, Marlene, happy wedding anniversary, 30 years. That's awesome. That is awesome. Barb says she buys, oh, she even buys the colored. Yes, by hand and dash. Yes, I I actually, you know what? I find that um, have, have and dash is uh, they sell the bobbins at a much better price than other shops. That's what I find. So I actually like I like that um the especially the bobbins from them. And they have very good thread too. They really do. Um uh, Karen said exactly. You gotta be in the mood to create. You do. You gotta be in the mood to create. Because I don't know, it's like I have to have my my moment, right? And it's like, and, but this is the thing. I should have only bought one pattern at a time. You know, but it's like, I guess at that moment, I was in the mood of thinking that I was going to sew. And some of these patterns are nice, you know? I mean, like, I look at some of this stuff, and, and this looks like stuff that I could use, right? Like, I'm like, oh, I could sew. This is cute. This is something that I could use. Like, when I look at these little baskets, right? I'm like, oh, I can put stuff in there, and I can hang it on my pedboard, you know? And I can put my stuff in there and everything. And then when I look at these little baskets right here, I'm like, oh, I can use this for, for stuff, right? You know, to store, you know, um, little things, you know. It's stuff that I, I, I could use, you know? And I'm like, oh, you know? And the same thing like here, you know, I, I got this. But see, I did use this one. This one I used because, look, I made this. mellow see this right here i made this so i i used one i used one you know and stuff so you know and this is for my juki so what i did was i made a little patch and this is uh the juki machine accessories pouch so i have all the accessories for my juki machine in here which is like really cool. So whenever I need to change my sewing foot or something like that, I can just pull this from here. So I kind of like that. So, you know, I mean, when I bought these, I was thinking, oh, this is stuff I could use, right? And stuff. And then this, you know, I thought, oh, these are cute little pocketbooks, right? I could make these little pocketbooks that I could just use every day, you know, instead of using my designer bags, I can just use one of these pocketbooks and stuff. Because, you know, let's let's get real. You know, you, you spend a lot of money, like thousands of dollars in some of these designer bags. You know, my husband kind of gets mad at me because he says, you know, I don't use them. But I'm like, I, you know, they're, they're expensive bags and I don't want them damaged, right? So I use them when we go out and everything, you know, that's when I'll, I'll, I'll take them out, okay? That's when I'll, you know, I'll rock the Gucci and, and the Louis Vuitton and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, you know, it's like for every single day, I'm like, no, you know, I'll, I'll use the cheap bag, the, the $20 bag or whatever. Or I'll buy, I'll go on, because I like supporting other um, Etsy sellers, right? So one of the things that I like to do too is I like to go on Etsy and you would be surprised the cute leather bags that are out there. So I'll go on Etsy and I'll just buy a cute little leather bag that, that's probably like, you know, $40, $50, $60. And I could use that every day. And, and I'm like, oh, so that could be my everyday bag. And then the expensive bags, I'll just keep that for special occasions for when Fred decides to take me out, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to say it like that. But we used to go out a little more often. But then the pandemic hit and then... uh Look at him. He a trip. You can't have none of this. <laughs> he a trip, this little guy. That's not for you. All right, here you go. All right. Here you go. You want to say hi to everybody? There you go. All right. 
yeah so so that's why i had bought that one because i figured i could just sell myself a cute little purse and stuff so i could use it every day because you know every day sometimes you throw your bag in the car and all that kind of stuff and everything go shopping you don't want to use your good stuff right mellow or you go walking around with mellow and stuff like that and then he pulls you and all that kind of, you're so cute today i don't know what it is with you you he's sexy <laughs> <laughs> this dog he's a trip he is a trip i'm telling you man he's he keeps us entertained oh my god all right he wants attention all right papa okay everybody sees you now okay all right so let me keep going down i'm gonna keep going down is that all right all right i'm gonna keep going down all right so yeah so he's got his little thing so i guess he wants to be in the conversation you want to be in the conversation okay gotcha all right, so um, hey Iris, how are you? Come on, Janet, get on the ball for that. <laughs> Go for it, <laughs> Iris. You trip. I do, I do, I know. I gotta get on it. I gotta get on it. I'm telling you, I do. I, don't, I do. <sighs> gotta find that time. I do. Oh my God, Jeanette, I got on the train with you and when I got four patterns, nothing done yet. I need my friend Carmen to show me. Yeah, and that's another thing too. You gotta know how to read these patterns, right? So it can get kind of like, you know, and, and it's not easy cutting patterns with him around, all right? Because the thing is these patterns are big, right? So usually what I do is I lay them on my floor. So when I lay them on the floor, the last time I did that, this guy came and then he just decided to sleep on the fabric. So to get him off, he looked like he's smiling. You know what you did. <laughs> You're a trip. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, and then that said she bought a scanning cut yesterday, still in the box. Think I'm scared of it. Don't do that. Don't let, don't be scared of machines. I'm telling you, don't do it. Look up those YouTube videos and start learning it. Okay. You spent money on that. So you want to make sure that you use it. Right, Melo? Okay. Um, see, I have to, what is Olivia saying? I have to house myself down often when my husband is rehearsing at gigs or playing golf. Take our baby dog for a long walk and then get in my room and play and create. Yeah, it's just, I have to, and you know what's funny is I feel like I can create and I can do things better when I have the house absolutely empty. Um, even Mel could sometimes get in the way because what happens is he comes in and then what he does is he actually falls out in the middle of the sewing room. He'll just lay out. Look at that, now he's going back like he ain't doing nothing. You know what you do. I mean, and the thing is, when I'm working in the sewing room, especially if I'm embroidering, sometimes I'm going back and forth between the cutting table and the sewing machines, right? And then he's laying on the ground, like, and he's a big dog. He's 85 pounds, and he's pretty big. So when he lays down, he lays down with his legs and everything. So I got to, like, jump over him and stuff. And sometimes I got to really push him out of the sewing room so that I can have the space to sew. But you really have to get in that mode and you, your, your environment's got to be right for you to actually be in that, that zone for you to sew. So, yeah. Um, hey, Sassy, it's easy for me to purchase correctly pre-wand that are seldom. Yep. Yeah, I just prefer to just buy them. I just, I really do. Um. Hey, Karen, how are you? Hey, Kelly, how you doing? Baby Giant, how are you? Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. Um, Jeanette, have you seen the new Ditto? Don't you show me anymore. Ditto, no more paper patterns. It's project design down on your fabric, and you can tailor that. No, I have not seen that, Judy, but oh, is that going to be something else that I'm going to want to buy? I have to see that then. I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. You said it's Dito. I'm gonna have to look at that. No more paper patterns. Fabric and you can tailor it. Ooh. 
you know, that would probably be a lot faster because the way I'm doing it right now takes a lot of work. It really does. And you got to be careful when you trace it because you want to make sure you trace it right. And you got to have the table for it. So my table is not big enough. So what I end up doing is I put the pattern on the floor and then I put the tracing paper on top. And then I have to trace around it. You know what I'm saying? So oh, he left. So, um, and that takes time. And then it's pretty uncomfortable for your back and all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, kind of hate that, you know? So, uh, yeah, Olivia has a very good point. You can actually save money when you make these items more than once. The more you make, the less it costs. That is very, very, very true. That is very true. And I will say that was, this was my second one, you know, <laughs> but I know I can make more of these and these would make, and you know, this, this would be a really cute, like makeup gift or something. This would be a really cute gift for somebody. People love this kind of stuff. And I liked it because I had a sewing pattern. See a little sewing pattern. So that's why I knew I wanted to get a little case for all my sewing accessories. So I thought this was really, really cute and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're right, Olivia. The, the more you make, the more you save and stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, it was I did the, the pattern crazy thing years ago when I was sewing dog clothes for my granddaughter. Totally understand. Yeah. Karen, I tell you, man, I bought these sewing, but I really, I want to do it. Honestly, I do want to do it. I want to get into sewing, okay? The whole, when I started this whole journal, I mean, this whole journal, this whole journey, okay? Maybe that, maybe the, this, maybe this cocktail is kicking in. I don't even know it. Okay, so anyway, when I started this whole journey, it was actually with a brother sewing machine, okay? It was a 1050 HC, okay? It was like, I paid, I think, like, 150 bucks for it, right? And it was just a sewing machine, just a flat out sewing machine. And I liked it so much. And then from there, I progressed over to the SC1900. Now, I'm going to be honest. The reason why I bought the SC1900 was because it had an automatic cutter, okay, where it cut the thread, right? Um, and it, you know, when I saw it added embroidery, I, I, at first, I was kind of curious about embroidery, but I, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. But I'm like, ah, let me do it, whatever, right? And I will say I felt guilty as crap because it was a thousand dollar machine. And my husband kept saying, don't worry about it. Just get it. Just get it. And I was just like, it's a thousand dollars. But then when the pandemic hit, I sold so much masks, face masks. I was selling them like crazy that I, that I made all that money back that I paid for that machine. So right there, the guilt was gone. I was like, oh my God, I don't feel guilty anymore. But then I wanted a multi needle machine and my husband was like, get it, just get it because you really seem to really enjoy doing this embroidery stuff. This stuff is you, get it. And he was pushing me to get the 10 needle machine at that time. And I was like, no, I think I want to get the six needle because the thing is, and I don't know how, I think this happens a lot with women. It's like, you, you, you have no problem going over and beyond for other people, but you will have a problem when it comes to spending money on yourself, right? So like if Carlito needs a haircut, it's not a problem. I will take the money out of my bag to give that boy a haircut. Make sure my husband looks good. Make sure Carlito looks good. So everybody in the house looks good, right? And then when Jeanette comes out, she looking raggy because Jeanette didn't cut her hair. Jeanette didn't go get her makeup done, nothing, okay? So, you know, it, it's just how it is, right? So when it came to to the the embroidery machine, Fred was like, get the 10 needle, get the 10 needle. And I was like, oh no, that's a lot of money. And uh, I don't know. So I said, no, um, you know what? It, six needles is good enough. I don't need 10 needles. Six needles is good enough. Well, I ain't gonna lie to you. After I got the six needle, at, it, it just took like about two or three months. And I was like, why didn't I get the 10 needle? I should have got the 10 needle. Well, after like eight months of only the six needle, then my husband said, well, it's time for you to buy a 10 needle. Let's get a 10 needle. Because now you got orders and they were coming in and a lot of orders were coming in and stuff. So that's when we ended up with the 10 needle. But um, yeah, so it, you know, it, it's, I will get back to sewing. I want to get back to sewing. I really do. I want to get back to sewing. But anyway, I went, I didn't I go down that rabbit hole. I think I went down that rabbit hole. Anyway, 
Hey, Linda, how are you doing? Um, let's see, let's see. You always need tracing paper. Um, let me see. Oh, Judy Bauer said, you're just buying stuff now for your retirement years because, you know, the pieces, oh, prices are going up. So actually saving money, giving yourself lots of projects in the future. That's my excuse. You know what, Judy? That is, you know, that's a very, very good um thought okay because let I me mean, let's talk about this for a minute prices are going up like crazy i mean i don't know what the heck's going on and one of the things that i was having a discussion with my husband was i don't know what these young people are gonna do especially like buying a home interest rates are skyrocketed okay i mean they're at like i think they're like seven percent now okay and i'm afraid that what's gonna happen is people are going to fall for these apr loans just like they did back in the day okay oh we'll get you a, a low loan or whatever and and next thing you know they're going to end up underwater or something like that i hope i hope not but the you know the interest rates have gone up i don't see the prices of homes going down as much some have but not as much so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how things go how car um car loans have gone up the prices of food has gone up. Everything's gone up, but people's checks. I'm telling you. So, Judy, you might have a very good point there where the prices of sewing machines may end up going up. The prices of, of fabric, thread, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. So, you know what? I think I'm going to use your excuse, too. I think I'll use that excuse. But, um. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do with this bobbin winder. I really do. Um, let's see. Hey, Kelly. Kelly says, cut. Uh, I cut my size to store bought patterns and save pieces in case I need a bigger size. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um. <laughs> All right, let's see what else. Um, let's see, let's go down, let's go down. If I skip your comment, I'm sorry. I just can't read all of them and stuff because it's like what if we're going at 10 o'clock. We're going on 10. Hey Yolanda, how are you? Um, Annette says, I am so right about the thread. They change dyes a lot, like yarn. Yep. I didn't know they did that on yarn as well, Annette. I didn't know that. But yeah, I mean, you gotta be. You got to be careful about that. And th this is the thing, too. You don't want to start embroidering a project with a sprue, and then the next sprue has a different color because then you, you just ruined your design. It looks tacky, right? So you have to be really careful of that. So make sure that you're, you're conscientious because if you see that the colors don't match, then use the big sprue because, you know, you don't want to run out. And then all of a sudden you don't have that same color on a design. It can really mess up your design. So, yeah. Do you like the, yeah, I do like the glide thread, um, Kim. But honestly, I like the Madeira better. Okay. I do like the Madeira better. And I'm going to tell you why I like the Madeira better. I like it because I can buy those colors in 40 weight or 60 weight, okay? And that's why I like Madeira, you know? So um, I, I feel like the 60 weight thread, they have a better selection. You know, that's how I see it, you know? Um, Floriani. Floriani. <laughs> Karen, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to, to, to remember how to say the brand of that thread. I really don't know. I mean, you know, y'all know my genetics. Y'all know. Um, Robin says, I need that roll of batty. <laughs> Girl, you know, I bought this roll years ago and it's just sitting here. It's just literally sitting here. I'm like, oh my God. And I and I want a quilt. I want to do a quilt. I want to I want to do stuff, but it's just finding the time. You know, making quilts is very very time consuming. Okay, you see these blankets. 
And you have to, you know, the thing that, that you people don't realize, and this is another thing that kind of sometimes takes me off is when you, you see people that are selling these quilts and then you have people that like say, oh, I don't want to pay that much for a quilt. Well, what the thing is, they don't, first of all, this is how I look at, then you shouldn't, you don't deserve that quilt. You know why? Because that means that you don't have a full understanding of the hands that made that quilt. People really don't understand the amount of time it takes for you to cut that fabric. And I mean, cut it precisely because you see some of these quilts are amazing, the designs. You have to cut precisely, you have to sew precisely, you have to actually nest all the pieces together you have to apply that batting. You have to put that through the quilty, the long arm machine. And then you have to actually bind that whole quilt together. The amount of time that it takes to make all these quilts. I mean, you're talking hours, days, and sometimes even months for a person to finish a quilt. So me, the way I see it is if you see a quilt and it's three, $400, I mean, it should be three, four hundred. It should be whatever they want to charge for that quilt because the amount of supplies and especially the time, the care, the skill set to have something like that handmade, it has, you know, you got to know how to appreciate it. And if you don't know how to appreciate something like that, honestly, I feel like then you really need to go to Walmart and just buy that $5 blanket. Okay, because that you'll probably appreciate. You don't know good quality stuff. I mean, that's just me. That's just how I look at it, okay? It's the same thing like when I buy, when I go on Etsy and I buy these leather bags, I know that these people are actually making these bags. They're making them from scratch. They're cutting the, le the leather. They are sewing the items together and all that kind of stuff. I appreciate that. And I love it. Okay. I've been buying a lot of bags from Ukraine. Okay. And some of those shops from Ukraine, the craftsmanship of these wallets and bags. I mean, it is just, it's, they're beautiful. And um, I have absolutely no problem paying. I have no problem paying because I know what I'm getting. I, and I know the amount of care that it takes for it. So, and this, that's the whole reason why going back to my gift exchange is why I want to do that is because as, as we are all crafters and we all create things, we know the value of something like that. We, we know that this is not something that somebody just grabbed off the shelf. We know that this is something so unique, okay, that it was made specifically for you by that person. That person had you in their mind when they were creating it and all that kind of stuff. It's special. It's just special. So yeah. So girl, you asked about that batting and that that's all that came out of my mind with that. Okay. <laughs> hey, Renetta, how are you? Um, let's see, let's see. Cut and sell. I will buy it. <laughs> Veronica's ready to buy my batting. <laughs> Maybe I should. I mean, because I don't need a whole roll. I really don't. I don't need a whole roll. So maybe I should cut some of it and, and see it. And that way I can have some more space in here and stuff. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I'm considering it. Um, can you list the Bob and Weiner patterns and unwanted items in your Etsy shop? Barb, you can um, do some. Um, the thing is, some of the rules on Etsy is they, they want handmade stuff on there. Now, another thing that you guys, um, may not know, it just crossed my mind because I, I said handmade Michaels is coming up with a handmade marketplace right now. It's at beta form and I got an invitation to put some stuff on there. I'm looking at it. Um, I am probably going to consider it. I'm not too sure. I kind of like the Etsy stuff. The problem that I see with the market, it, the marketplace in the Michaels website is because it's very new. It's in beta form. So I really don't think they have the audience, the customer base 
yet for that forum. So it's like you'll be like putting it out there and I don't know if you're going to make sales. Like with Etsy, you already have a good customer base. There's a lot of customers going to that site to look for certain things. I don't think Michaels has that yet. So um, I'm still looking into it. Um, I know someone had asked me about it. I'll, I'll let you guys know how I feel about it, you know, if I'm going to do it or not. I want to research that some more. Um, their fees seem to be a little bit cheaper than Etsy. But like I said, what I'm concerned about is the um, the audience that they have. Do they have the right audience? I don't think they do yet. I think they'll get there eventually, but I don't know if there's something that, that they have right now. So, um, yeah. But um, you reminded me of that, Barb, when you put that there. Um, yeah, but I do see that some people do sell fabric in Etsy shops and all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll look to see if that's something I could do. And if I can, maybe I'll, maybe I'll cut up some of the batting and put it up there for sale and stuff. We'll see. And, and all that stuff. And you know what would be funny if, if I do end up selling all the batting and then later on I have to go to the store and buy batting. That, wouldn't that be a trip? <laughs> If I then have to go, I ran out of batting, uh, batting. Now I have to go to the store and buy batting. That that would be a mess, right? Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, hey, Gail, how are you? Um, as much as I sometimes hate, let's see, as much as I sometimes hate not having a fabric store or Michael's near me, it definitely helps me to make purchases I don't definitely need. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, that's why to me, I just feel like, um, yeah, that, that you know, I heard somebody say that once. I heard someone say, you know, if, if you like a fabric and, and you, don't, you don't know what you want to do, just buy half a yard, right? But then I ended up doing that. And then now I ended up with all this fabric and I still don't know what to do with it. So I'm like, is that really a good thing? I, I don't think so. Didn't work for me. That's for sure. It really didn't work for me. And stuff. Hey, Annette, love your Fridays. Don't sell yourself short while in the same boat. <laughs> I can tell you how many things I have in the closet. Don't open the door. I'm telling you, yeah. I mean, and you know what's, what's, what's um, funny is I am going to have to go. I'm going to have to open up my closet door. Because one of the things that I plan on doing, because I am trying to save my pennies as much as possible, is I am going to revamp this whole room. Okay. Um, you know, Cardito is going to be coming back on a permanent basis after May. This will be his last year at VCU. And so he's definitely going to need his room back. Okay. And I want to really make that room home for him. And I'm going to have to make this space work. So one of the things that me and my husband are doing is we're researching furniture and different stuff. And I am going to have to get to the point, to the point where, we're going to take everything, excuse me, everything out, okay? And then I am going to look through my whole stash and I'm going to reorganize the whole room, okay? And I will videotape the whole process so you guys can see what I got and and how I, I reorganized the room and all that kind of stuff. I will videotape that. Um, I'll do a before and after, okay, in the video, you know, of this is how my room is, this is how I have it organized and stuff like that, and then I'll, you know, we're going to look at the after, and I'll explain what I got and all that kind of stuff. So I am looking at some furniture, because what you guys don't know is, like, right now, a lot of my furniture, like the table that is right in front of me, is those folding tables that you see at, um, you know, at uh, Costco or BJ's, you know, that you take picnic tables. I have a lot of those in here. And that's what I've been using to hold my machines and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I have some boxes and all that. And I, I really need to better organize the stuff. And at the same time, I want to declutter. I want to start looking at stuff that I bought like blanks. Like I know I have a lot of sublimation blanks that I didn't use, like wine wine cups that I didn't use. Um, I got some little uh, cheese plates that, you know, for sublimation that I didn't use. Um, now I'm looking while I'm talking to you guys. Um, yeah, I have a lot of stuff. So I really need to go through everything 
and see what what is it that I really need and what was it that I don't use and um, probably do a yard sale or something in my neighborhood and see if there's other crafters out here that might want some of these items, you know. Um, but, and I also want to make sure that the flow of the room really works well. I'm not going to do it like now because, you know, the holidays are going to come soon. And usually in the holidays, my sales are really high locally and online. So I'm not going to have time to set up new furniture and, you know, plan out a new sewing room and redecorate and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have a lot of sentimental also items that I have in my room that I'm definitely going to be keeping. Like, you know, like I have uh, the portrait of Mello that Sandra made for me. Um, that will never go away. I have a lot of thank you cards and letters from a lot of you guys that watch me you know, that you guys send me letters. I actually have those hanging on my wall in front of me. And actually, I love those things when you guys send me that stuff. Because to be honest, I, you know, sometimes I do get a little down, you know, like if I feel like, God, you know, like I feel like I'm not doing well or stuff. And, you know, little episodes like these happen, okay, where, you know, the back of the, you know, little uh, mistakes, you know. Um, and I have my little moments and stuff. And I will tell you a lot of times what I do is I'll look at my wall and I'll look at those cards, those thank you cards from a lot of folks that send me saying thank you for helping me and, you know, you know, that stuff. And that that, that lifts me up a little bit, you know, and it, it, it's like, it's like, wow, okay, Jeanette, you are making a difference. Keep going. Don't quit. Keep going. You know, because like I said, if you just help one person in this world, right? It, it makes everything worth it, right? And, and that's really what I wanted out of my channel was I see that sometimes people don't, they, they help, but when they help, they do it like on a halfway. And I really want to be as transparent as possible so that people can all succeed and make things happen. Whether you're doing embroidery just for gifts and stuff, or whether you're even doing it for business. I mean, you know, some people, when they run their own embroidery business, they get a little, um, you know, not, not you know, like protective or whatever, but they don't, they want to share, but they don't want to share everything because they're afraid that, you know, somebody, you know, the competition, right? But the way I see it is there's enough work out in this world really for everybody, honestly, and um, there's really, you know, when you, when you help one person and you don't know that person's situation either when you're helping someone, right? You don't know if they're having financial difficulties. You don't know if, if they're they're having some kind of personal struggle um, that they just have to get over and stuff. And that little bit of advice or that little bit of encouragement or just helping that one person, you could change that for them. And you don't know that. It might be a simple thing for you, but for them, it means everything. So that's why to me it's like i don't know it's like you know i had one one girlfriend i remember when she said oh well, you, you're um what what did she say she said something about um you're giving them all your cheese or something like that and i'm like this there's, there's enough cheese for everybody there's enough cheese for everybody I'm, I'm fine with that i'm like what's wrong with that somebody somebody's got to help somebody right that's how i look at it you know but anyway I don't know why I got down that ramp, but y'all you know, yeah, know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean, you know, to watch me. Anyway, <laughs> hey, Gail, how are you? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hey, Janet, how you doing? Um, oh, that's nice, Karen. Thank you. She says, we appreciate you giving us your Fridays. Wish I was close. I hang out with you anytime. Living ah, ah. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate that. Be honest though. I mean, I really do. I like, and I think that's why my embroidery happy hours, even though it's supposed to be an hour, right? I end up talking more and more because I just feel like I don't know. I feel like I have a connection with a lot of you guys, you know. And I really like helping you guys. Like some of you guys actually like reach out. And they're like, you know, I get stuff like, I want to start an Etsy shop, but, you know, you guys are afraid or you just need that encouragement or that little push, you know, or you guys want a machine, but you don't know if it's the right one. And you, some some of you guys have reached out with me at Facebook and 
I remember one person was trying to buy something, but I knew they were getting the wrong one. And I didn't know if they read my text. So what I did was I just phoned them from uh, Facebook and they were like, oh my God, you reached out, you know? Um, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, you, you, you got to care about other people. You really do. You got to care about other people. Um, you know, and, and just, you, you do things is one of the things I tell my son is just do the right thing. You know, there's so much jerks out there, right? There are, there are a lot of a-holes everywhere. Okay. I mean, <laughs> people that will smile in your face. And I mean, I, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to be one. Let them, if that's who they want to be, then let that be their definition of who they want to be. But the way I look at it is, that's not me. That's not, that's not me. You know, um, it's not who I am. And I'm even like that at my job, which I know it, sometimes it, it bothers some people that I work with because they're, you know, they don't like helping people but they'll turn people away. And then when I see they turn them away, I'm the one that stands up and goes, what is it that you need? Oh, I know how to do that. Let me help you, you know? <laughs> if they just turn and look at me and I'm like, what? Just help God. <laughs> it's like, I'm just different. I'm just different. Um, it's, it's just who I am. That's, that's all it is, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, if you help one person, um, to me, that's a lot, you know, that that's a lot, you know, and stuff, but that's just, that's just, you know, that's just how I see the world, you know, anyway, let me go down and keep going. Cause I know it's, it's already, woo, it's 10 o'clock. Okay. So like I said, I talk a lot. Okay. <laughs> um, Hey, crafty Puerto Rican. I, yep. She says she also bought a lot of patterns and, and, and fabrics that she used and hasn't used them yet. I'm telling you, man, it's like, uh, you know what? Maybe one Friday we should just do a pick a pattern and let's just all do it day. <laughs> Everybody make your own patterns and then we go online and go, look what I made, you know? <laughs> because it's like, oh God, you know, Fridays are therapy for me. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you guys are really enjoying the Fridays. I really am, you know, because sometimes I do worry. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. There have been moments where I'm like, I'm ready to go on live. And then I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if anybody's going to show up. I'm like, are people going to watch me? You know, if not, then I guess I'll be talking to myself, you know. And, you know, you you get like that. Like, I remember my sister, when she first did her live, she was really scared. She was like, oh, God, this is live, you know, because any little mistake is sly, right? But after she got over that, you know, the anxiety and stuff, she got over that. Now she's like, oh, this is fun. I just do it just to do it because it's just, you know, just like um, who was it that said Jackie? Jackie says, Fridays are therapy for me. Well, it's kind of like that for me too. It's my time. I think it's my time to like kind of like think out loud about different topics, different things. And, and at the same time, after I think out loud that I like to go in the chat and then I like to look at you guys and go, well, what did you think? Did you agree? Did you not agree? Or do you have a better idea? Like, you know, like when I was doing the knitted, um, the felt on the knitted blankets and you guys saw I was cutting the knit and I'm like, how am I going to fix this? And Barb came with the solution, topping. And I'm like, oh my God, that came out, you know, beautiful. I did another video actually using the topper and it came out great. And I was like, oh my God, that, that saved me. That saved me, you know? So, I mean, you know, these Fridays are kind of like therapeutic for me. And it's something that I'm just going to continue on because I have a lot of fun doing it. I like doing it. I like sharing um, and if you guys ever have like something that you want me to talk about, to research on or anything, any topic, like, you know, it, anything on embroidery or sewing or stuff like that, make sure you leave it in the comments and stuff, because I do read every single comment that comes in. Okay. And I always like to respond to you guys because I love interacting with you guys. So if there is subjects out there that you're curious about, not sure about and stuff like that, or you want me to research and stuff, 
I'll do an embroidery happy hour on it. I mean, I have no problem. You know, I'm always thinking on my own of some stuff to come up with because I always want to be as, you know, these Fridays, I want it to be fun and I want it to be educational. And, um, you know, and I want it to be a moment where you guys can be encouraged and stuff like that. Just do your thing, you know? Um, so, yeah, if you guys have ideas or something like that, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm open, you know, and stuff. i um, here for you guys, you know, and I'll do whatever I can, you know, to help you guys. Um, let's see. I'm going down here. Uh, da, 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 da. And if you guys are in there, hey, J-Love, how you doing? Hey, Uniquely Dub. Linda Gray, how are you? Hey, Linda M, how are you? I went through the same thing. Yep. <laughs> she did too. Poor Linda. Oh my God. Yes. I mean, and, and let me tell you, I love my riser. It's beautiful. I got it in red. Has a little draw. So cute. But that arm, it, it's, yeah, it doesn't work. It just doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't really do put me in, you know, where I want it to go. So it's all right. You you know what, Linda, we learned. We learned. I'm telling you, we, we did. But it was not a good buy for me. It really wasn't. You know, I mean, it, but apparently people like them because, um, and I would love to know what is it that they truly, truly, truly use it for? What? I mean, you know, and stuff. Oh, my God. I'm kind of hot. And stuff. I don't have the fan. Do I? Yeah, but it's not flowing and stuff. Woo, got a little fan here going on. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, I got this on Timo, by the way. It was a cute little fan. And it works. They're great. If you got if you have hot flashes, he's great. And look, it has a little stand. Comes with a little stand and stuff like that. I was like, oh, and then it's small, so I figured I could put it in my pocketbook. So if ever I'm like somewhere and I get a little hot flash and stuff, I can just take it out and then I can just go, whoo, you know, and stuff. And then, you know, and which I've done. And then some people like look at me like, what the heck? And I go, oh, it's a hot flash. You know, once you pass 50, you get that. And then they start laughing. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, you got to have fun with life, right? You know, why not? Okay. So <laughs> anyway. So if you guys see me at the sewing quilt show, I'll probably be at the, my sewing class, okay, and with my serger, and I'm going to have my fan right on my desk, okay? So, <laughs> you know, um, hey, my peanuts, how are you? How you doing? Oh, I love all your tutorials. I'm looking at your, oh, supply list in the channel and several stabilizers. I don't know what was used for the recent blanket tutorial. Can you share the product name? I actually, okay, for the blanket tutorials, I use tear away stabilizer. But let me tell you, the tear away stabilizer that I have is like a medium weight, right? So I found that it was kind of hard to like pull it. So what I recommend you do is if you get the tearaway stabilizer, get a light weight. Because remember, this is knitted. So you want something that's going to be really super easy for you to tear off. Okay. So I would say use light tearaway stabilizer. I had the medium weight and it was kind of hard to like pull off and stuff like that. So that's what I use. But I use the medium because that was what I had in the, in the house at the time. And those were just samples that I was making. So that way, you know, I could see how it comes out. And then I would take the picture and put them on my Etsy shop, you know, because I always like to make sure that it's something that I can do before I sell it. You know, I'm not going to go and put it on there. And then I'll be like, oh, my God, now I, I got to make this. It's a struggle. You know, if it's easy to do or something like that, then I'll do it, you know. But, um, yeah, but that's what I did, um, Peanut. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hey, Wanda, how are you? Um, oh, she says she's a thread junk junkie, too. There's just so much um, to do. Uh, let's see. I'm going. I'm trying to go down as fast because I, I want to give you guys back your your weekend because it's ten fifteen now, and you know it's a three day weekend. So, but I want to make sure that I don't miss questions out there. If I do miss your question in the chat by mistake, okay, just go ahead and post it on the comments. 
at the you know at the end and I will answer your question. Okay, so don't worry. All right. So oof, man, I'm hot. Hot. Okay. Um Oh my goodness, another one. She said her daughter's 29 and she too says she doesn't want to totally bum me out. Yeah, Marina, I know. Yeah, my son says he doesn't want any. So I'm like, okay, so that's fine. You know, I'm a little bummed out too, but at the same time, I kind of understand because raising kids is to me, it's it's a lot of work. Now, for me personally though, I was a single mother, right? So um I had Cardito and I was a single mother for, for, you know, since Cardito was three years old. So it is hard. Okay. And, you know, and when he, they become teenagers, it's like, it, it, that's when, you know, that's where, you know, in my house, you know, my family, we say, you know, this is the, the, what the saying that we say, I don't know what y'all guys say, but um, they said, you know, they start smelling themselves, you know, <laughs> which means, you know, they know everything. They know nothing. Um, you are now the dumb parent and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, oh boy, that's when the rough ages come, right? And then they tell me that it kind of stops when they're in their late 20s or 30s or something like that. Then all of a sudden you're a smart parent again, okay? Now you're smart because now, you know, they they kind of like are starting to grow up, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Cardito's, but the Cardio's 22 years old and he's still trying to figure out where's his place in this world. And, um, which, you know, I'm okay with that. I mean, because this is how I look at it. Life can be very long, right? So, it, but it could be long in one or two, two ways. You can live a long, happy, and, and I emphasize the word happy because that's one of the things I tell my son is just be happy. Mon money follows, Money, money will follow, okay? Um, but you got to be happy. But if you're not happy, life can really suck, okay? So to me, it's like take your time and try to figure life out, what's best for you. Because that's the thing. It's just kind of like when people talk embroidery machines, right? You know, some people, um, I know I kind of, not, not that I upset them, but... I, I feel that sometimes it's like they, they, they're looking for another answer, right? Like they'll come on, they'll say, well, Jeanette, you know, I want um, a multi-needle machine or I want a flatbed machine. What do you think of this brand? What do you think of that brand? And stuff like that. I tend to shy away from telling people, honestly, like what to buy, okay? For the simple fact that mach every machine provides its own unique benefit or functions and stuff like that right so when you're looking at a machine you really have to think about what you want okay what is it that you want to do um sometimes people will buy a machine just because someone else has it but in actuality i really believe that you need to be buying a machine that's going to fit your particular needs because your needs are going to be different from everybody else's and your wants and all that kind of stuff. So you, you know, and machines cost a lot of money. They're not, they're not cheap. Okay. Uh, you know, sewing machines, flat, flatbed machines can, can run up to $20,000. Um, same thing with a multi machine. So whatever you buy, I always say, you know, I will give you things to consider. That's what I will do. I will say, think about the functionality. Think about the support. Do you know people that own that machine? Can you play with that machine? Have you, you know, talked to people that own them? But I'm not talking about people that own them that bought them last year or people that just bought them last month. I'm talking about, can you talk to somebody that has owned that machine for five years or more? Okay, so that you can actually talk to them about the support that they get when something happens to that machine, when their machine breaks, how do they fix it? I mean, who do they go to? How much does it cost to fix and stuff like that? You know what I mean? It's, um, you know, there's so many different things that you have to think about. You have to do your own research. And a lot of times people, what they want is they want that answer. To, they want that answer of, 
hey, this is what you buy. I don't believe in doing that. And I don't believe that that anyone should really be pushing any type of machine. Now, you should be sharing information about the machine and say, this machine does this, that, whatever. But, you know, and this is the functionality you get with this machine. Of course, you know, we, sh- we need to share that information. But the thing is, everyone, everyone has to buy the machine that is comfortable for them. Everyone learns at a different pace. Everyone, you know, has different needs and stuff like that. So you have to do what's right for you. That's why, you know, when I've had, I've, I have had some um, brands come out and ask, hey, will you be, you know, an affiliate for an embroidery machine? No, I won't do that. I, I'm not going to do that. Um, I buy the machines with my own money, okay? Um, and I bought these machines because they work for me. I don't tell people this is what you should buy. Okay, regarding machinery like that. I just, and I won't do that. That's, you know, little products. Yeah, you know, that I don't, I don't mind, you know, because they're, they're little. But to me, these machines, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And, and it's so important for people to make the right decision for themselves. You're talking about thousands of dollars. You're not talking about, 20 bucks here or something like that. You're talking thousands. So it's important that you're getting a machine that is going to work for you. I mean, people sometimes go in debt when they buy these embroidery machines. You want to make a make sure it's a very well informed and comfortable decision for you. So I know that a lot of times people get a little frustrated because like I said, I don't push the brand. All I'll do is I will give you things to consider. Because and it, and it's not to shy you away or or steer you in a direction. It's so that you can make sure that you are considering those options for yourself, and you can make the best educated decision for you. So that's just you know really how I stand on that. So I just want to share that anyway. <laughs> so yeah, but um, yeah, I went from from talking about Carlito to talking the machines. I don't know. Well, anyway, okay. So, um, yeah, so, okay, Julie, yeah, so you're with me on that. You're right on the, on the hoops, don't work. Tried a couple myself, it's not a go. Yeah, you know, I saw this, you know, I mean, and I know, I know babies are small, Julie, but I was like, are they really, that's what, I mean, like I said, I haven't holded a baby in a very long time, but I don't think they come in this size. So to me, I feel like these in the hoop bib things, I think they work well if you're if you're making them for dolls. That's what I'm thinking. But this is not this is not um, something that. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, I'm going to hurry up and give this to her. I'll probably put it on her door in her mailbox. Not her doorstep. I'll put it in her mailbox probably tomorrow morning um, before the the kid grows up. (laughs) As I say, I say he'll probably be able to wear it in a week because, you know, little little babies after they're born, boy, they, they grow up really, really fast, you know. So I'll probably just throw it in her mailbox in the morning and stuff like that. Um, let me see. Yeah, the plastics. Yeah, they are iris. These these are a little bit. And this is the other thing, too. When you're talking about these plastic uh, snips, right, they also sell the long ones. And if you notice... I use the kitchen towel, okay? This is the back of a kitchen towel, one that, you know, that I I messed up on and I still haven't, you know, used them all. I kind of like use some for um, washcloths, but um, I've said, let me use one of them as the back instead of batting, right? Um, And these snaps I have, because this material is so thick, I had to use the long ones. Yeah, so, but these snaps are okay. They're not that bad. They're, they're not that bad, but, you know, I mean, they're not great, you know, but, but they work. They're all right. But like I said, I had to, to switch for a long one, you know, so yeah. Um, oh, Danielle says she buys the bibs in a pack from Birmingham. Yep. And then in broader the name on it. Yeah, and I think that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. But see, I wanted to do it this way, Danielle, because 
you know, you get to like turn it inside out, right? Because see, when you embroider right on it, you kind of like see the back of the embroidery here, right? So I was trying to like avoid that. So that's why I thought this would be a cute thing. But I think I'm going to do just like you said. I'm going to go to Birmingham. And I think they have one in Manassas. So I'll probably just go over there and I'll probably just buy a pack. And then I'm just going to embroider, you know, the baby's name. And I'll probably do different appliques and all that kind of stuff and everything. And then good to go. I'm probably going to do that. Because, you know, bibs are pretty inexpensive. They're not expensive at all. You know, they're pretty inexpensive. And you know what? Now I think about it. I have a wholesale place that's by here too. And I'm going to look over there. Um, Atlantic, uh, oh, Atlantic Ocean Cotton is a wholesale place here in Gainesville. And I think they sell bibs. So I'm going to look and see. And if they sell bibs, I bet you those bibs are probably like maybe a dollar or two and stuff like that. So I'll just get those and I'll just embroider those. So, Danielle, thanks for um, pointing that out because I think I'm going to do that. Um, Deborah, Deborah's saying she's not a fan of them. Yeah, I know. Many of them, I can do faster sewing on my regular. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it just depends on the project and stuff. But Olivia says she loves them. She likes the bag. Had made with zippers and snaps, and I made the notebook. Yeah, I love the notebook covers. I love the notebook covers, and I love the in the hoop with the vinyl and stuff like that. I think this is so cool. I think it's so 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 cool. Yeah. Um. Oh, Karen, that's a good idea. Thank you. Look at that. She said you could use this as a door to hang on the door. You are asked, you know what? That's, thank you. Thank you. I am going to, you know what? I'm going to put a little note and I'm going to tell uh, my friend, use this as a, as, as a doorknob to hang on the doorknob. Thank you. I, I love that idea. Thank you, Karen. That cute idea. See, that's what I'm talking about. Interaction. <laughs> there you go. That way it's not a waste. And this is cute. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, maybe they should sell that in the hoop as door hangers and not do that. Look at that. Oh, Mello showed up again. What you doing, Mello? Okay. Um... What is it, Papa? What is it? Oh, my goodness. You ready to go night-night? Is that what it is? Oh, you're so cute. You're handsome, dog. Okay. And stuff. Um, I'm sure he's going to, like, bother me and stuff because he's going to want some. Look at that tail going. Um. Yep. Oh, and then the boxes. It's something that she, you. I never bought. He's seeing unboxing. I never thought they were worth it. Yeah, well, Olivia, like I said, if, if you if the hats, if you sell baseball hats, you got to do the box. You got to because you don't want that one delivery to go bad. And the next thing you know, you end up with a bad review. Um, Let me see. Do I put them in boxes? No, I don't, Marnie. I will put them in a box if they're going as a gift to someone, like a family or friend that I'm going to give to. But when a customer buys the dinner napkins, dinner napkins are kind of, you know, they're just a napkin. So it's not going to get damaged. I just put them in a plastic bag and then I put them in the, the packaging shipping. That's how I do it, Marlene. Um, I don't use the boxes for that. Um, let's see, let's see, trying to go down and let's see. Hey, Kim, how are you? Um Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hey, Renetta, how are you? Your drinks look so refreshing. I'll tell you, this is a, a strawberry daiquiri. This is a daiquiri and stuff with um, Bacardi. You know, Puerto Ricans love their Bacardi. <laughs> You know, so um, let's see. Hey, Sunrise, how are you? Um, let's 
see trying to go down trying to go down hey eve how are you girl how are you doing um oh my goodness marlene said she got over 200 polo shirts because it was a good deal now they're sitting on the shelf so some but have many to go ah yeah, I'm telling you, it's like you got to be really careful with the stuff that you buy because next thing you know, you end up with a lot. You really do. And it, it is so easy to, to fall on that. It really, really is. Um, hey, Nettie, how are you? Hey, Janet. Let's see. Um, let's see, let's see. You're making me and my Spontaneous purchase is sad. <laughs> Eve. <laughs> I guess you're doing the same thing too, all that fabric. She's <laughs> Eve, are you sitting in that room looking around, looking at all your fabric, going, what the <laughs> I'm telling you, that's I told myself, I don't care how many coupons come in the mail, but I am not going to be um you know purchasing any more fabric not for a very very long time just not going to do it um let's see uh but the pat the fabric be pretty and i know i know that's what but you know what if you don't go you don't see if you don't see you don't buy that's why I'm not going. But you know, oh my goodness, when we go, when I go to the sewing and quilt show, I'm going to be surrounded by fabric. So that's not going to be very uh, healthy, you know. Because, but I promised myself, um, I, I, you know, I'm going to do the same thing like last year, and I think I'm going to put this on um, maybe uh, Daniela and Miss Banks. And anybody else that's hanging out with me, I'll be like, you ain't supposed to let me spend money. I'm going to put it on y'all. <laughs> um, let's see. Hey, Miss Parker, how are you? Hey, Castle Creations, how you doing? Um, let's see, let's see. Um, I'm scrolling down as fast as I possibly can so that we can all say goodnight. Um, let's see. But I want to make sure I don't miss a question. And if I do, I'm so, so sorry. And if I didn't say hi, I'm sorry to Nita B, how are you? But I'm trying to call out the names. Foxy Burn One, how are you? Scare Wisdom, Karen Cole. Um... Let's see, Danielle, yes, I am going to Expo Shopping and a couple of classes on Thursday. Oh, I'll be there Thursday, but Thursday I'm going to be there only in the morning. I have a class on Thursday. I'm going to do five zippers, five bags, and one serger. I'm taking all serger classes, and that's going to be on Thursday from 8.30 to 11.30. Uh, that's where I'm going to be. Um, let's see. Oh, Jan Crafty Puerto Rican. Booking a hotel. Excellent idea. The expo is about a half an hour, an hour and a half drive for me. Yeah, I mean, um, Crafty Puerto Rican. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, because I was thinking if we're going to be hanging out Friday night, we're probably going to be talking, hanging out, and most likely we're going to enjoy each other's company so much that I don't want to like leave like exhausted and then be driving all that time to come back home because most likely I am going to come back home really late and then to have to get in the car and then drive back. So I figure for that one night, I will, um, you know, I will do the, uh, Oh my God, my girlfriend is like texting me like crazy. She's got to cut this out. Um, I'm gonna block her. Even though, no, I wouldn't do that because that's that's my that's one of my best friends. So. <laughs> 
her son is in the army. So I promised her that I would make some army gear for her and stuff like that. So I got it. I have to definitely do that. And I did tell her, send me some pictures of some stuff that you see that you like. And then I'll see if I can duplicate something similar to that. Because um, her son should be graduating from boot camp soon from the army. So I'm pretty psyched. We're all, ha we're all happy for him and stuff. So, yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. So um, let me see. I'm going down. I want to make sure I catch everything. And I think I am good. Oh, my goodness. Something fell just here. Oh, my God. I'm a mess. I'm a mess, guys. Um, let's see. I think I'm good. I think I am good. I am scrolling down quick, kind of quickly and stuff. Um, so if... Um, if I miss something, oh my goodness, it's a lot of it's a lot down the chat and stuff. Um oh babe, um Eve got a very good um uh, idea. Um she said um a ton of fabric. I donated it, but thread. My thread is insane. But you know, you can donate thread too. But, you know, I have seen some folks on YouTube channel where they do talk about that they go to the thrift stores to actually purchase threads. And so they actually go there for threads, sewing machines, and fabric. And they also go to buy used clothes so that they can cut up and use the fabric of the used clothes. So is that's another option out there. But... Like I said, I got to use what I got, okay? And so I'm not buying anything more. But it would be interesting. I have not gone to the um, thrift shop yet. And I do have several that are buying me. But I think I will probably take a trip to one of these um, thrift shops. But uh, not anytime too soon, okay? Where I... We'll go ahead and I and I can see, you know, what they have, if they have any sewing equipment and stuff like that in there. But I bet you you could probably find some stuff in there. But that's a really good um, idea of donating it. That is something, and you can write it off on your taxes. So that's not a bad thing. But wouldn't it suck, though, after you donate it, then you needed it, you know? Because <laughs> you know, that would find me my luck. It'd be like, oh, I donated all this um, fabric. And then I'm like, oh, I could have used it for that, you know? <laughs> so I'm thinking if anything, I'll probably make a lot of different cases and stuff like that. Like maybe makeup cases and all that stuff. I'll figure something out, maybe little small projects or something, and then give them out as gifts and stuff. Or whoever I get this year at the gift exchange, I'll probably end up, you know, you're going to probably get a lot of coin cases and different types of fabric. And so you'd be like, damn, Jeanette really did a lot of sewing. <laughs> So I'll I'll figure it out and stuff. Um, yeah, and see Denise Venezuela, she said that just buy a half a yard didn't work uh, because I always thought most if I make a quilt, see, and then buy the bolt. Yeah, and then yeah, see, and then exactly. So I mean, I heard someone say that. Denise, and they were like, oh, just, you know, if you like the fabric, just buy half a yard. But but then, like you said, you know, sometimes you have a project that requires more than half a yard. And if you wanted to use that fabric, then you're, you're, you're screwed, you know? So it's like, ah, so what are you going to do, right? So anyway, guys, I am going to call it the night because I could see that my, um, my girlfriend, she actually sent me about, I think like one, two, three four, five, six. She sent me seven texts of things that she uh, she wants me to do because um, her son is graduating. I believe it's next month from the uh, boot camp in the Army in South Carolina, I think it is. I think it's South. No, I think it's North Carolina. I think. I have to check. Um, and I got to find out when to because I would really love to go myself because I, you know, I've known this little boy since he was 18 months old. That's, you know, him and my son grew up together. So I, um, and he's not even a little boy anymore. That's a grown man. Okay. So <laughs> he, 
I am. I would definitely love to be there to watch him graduate from boot camp uh, from the Army. So, yeah. So I want to get back with her and I want to talk to her and see what it is that she wants because we all have to get decked out and we have to be there for John and cheer him on as he graduates from boot camp. So anyway, guys. So it is a long weekend. Enjoy your long weekend with your family and your friends in your sewing rooms and stuff. Cause you know, I'll be stuck here, but um, please, you know, and not even stuck cause this is my favorite place. But um, you know, like I said, please, um, you know, if you like today's um, video and topic, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you know anyone that is probably be able to benefit from this channel, please share it with them, okay? So that way they can be part of the community as well and stuff. So as always, I always enjoy um, spending Fridays evenings with you guys. I hope you found the information useful and entertaining. And like I said, if you have a topic you want me to explore or something like that, just leave it in the comments below and I will make sure to look it up and it can end up turning out to be a embroidery happy hour topic for us to talk about. So I will talk to you guys later. You guys have a great weekend. Be safe out there and I will see you guys next Friday. So have a good one, everyone. Bye.